You got it locked on rodeo radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in the motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play a dope shit mix by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth. I like concert, now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape for two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it, Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix Tony A! Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 319. And before I introduce my very special guest, uh, I want to thank everybody who liked, comment, subscribe, everybody in the live chat, and everybody who decided not to be on the live chat. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this beautiful Sunday evening, a night where the 49ers lost, and so did the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm really, really happy. So, uh, But yeah, you know what? I just want to thank all you guys. Hope you, hopefully you guys are having a good time. Remember, it is October. It is spooky season. It is my favorite time of the year. Yes, I even like Halloween over Christmas. So, cause, cause most of you guys, especially if you're Rasa, it's either Merry Chisme or Merry Crystal. But anyways, um, other than that, make sure that, uh, letting you guys know we are also on Rumble live right now on Rumble. So I want to welcome everybody from Rumble that's watching right now. Thank you guys. Um, other than that, I want to thank our members. I want to thank everybody who's been tuning into Freaky Tales because we've been going on twice every week when we talk about the paranormal, spooky, ghost story stuff that you guys like. So thank you guys for that. Uh, we'll be going on. This week, twice again, all this month on Freaky Tales. So make sure you guys definitely check that out. Okay. Other than that, uh, Club Rhodium. Club Rhodium. Make sure you guys get your tickets. We're already halfway sold out. Okay. I don't want to hear at the last minute people showing up at the door and say, Tony, I'm trying to get in. We told you to buy your tickets. Okay. Make sure um, I'm going to put the, the, the link on the, on the description. And I'm also going to put it in my story, on my bio. Uh, you guys definitely don't want to miss it. I'm going to have some of my favorite DJ friends there. And we're going to be spinning all of 90s stuff. Okay? All 90s music. For those of you guys that are tired of listening to this junk that's on the airwaves, come out November 17th on a Friday. And you guys will definitely have a great, great time. Come and have a shot with me. All right? So other than that, Alex, anything else? Uh, no. So listen, without further ado, please allow me to introduce my very special guest, 44 Vato. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. You already know who it is. It's the most viral Vato, the number one most hated Vato, 44 Vato. Appreciate you having me on, my boy. No. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. You know what? When I first heard of you, it was through Instagram. And by the way, I think we were following each other on our last, my last page. Keep in mind, um, which mu with much success comes much hate because this is now my seventh Instagram page. Wow, bro, wow. My seventh. I've never I had a page. I was bad. Yeah, never had a page longer <laughs> than a year. Yeah. You know, now somebody may ask, you know what, uh, uh, who is this guy? I in a nutshell, can you kind of give us uh, a little bit of your background? Who is 44 Vato? Uh, well, 44 Vato, uh, he actually started off uh, just po uh, posting content, bro, just, um, you know, back in. 2018 i went ahead and i bought an instagram page bro it was called like something like chicano vibes or something like that and it was it had 22,000 followers and so uh what i did is that i took that page i knew that it had a big chicano following and uh i decided to just keep posting bro and keep posting so i first started off just posting pictures of like say like certain rappers in the in the game and then i would like title it with like I don't know, Chicano power or something like that. But, bro, I, was, I kept on losing followers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I kept on losing followers. I was like, damn, these fools ain't rocking with it. And so I, w I kept trying and trying and trying because you already know life is all about trying and trying, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, I kept trying and trying and I kept failing, bro. But I knew that one of these posts was going to hit. So I decided, bro, to make a Blood In, Blood Out post. And I literally just went to Blood In, Blood Out 
full uh full movie on YouTube, and I went and I screen recorded it. And so when I got that screen recording, I went, I put it on Instagram, bro, uploaded it, got like a hundred followers or say like 50, 75 followers. And I was like, oh, this is working. Boom. I don't know if you were familiar with the show named the Beyond Scared Straight. Do you know that? I heard of Scared Straight. Yeah, the, the, I think it was that. Yeah, pretty okay. much. But, yep. The original one, I believe, came out in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that, that, that food's been going on for a long ass time. But pretty much uh, I decided to start getting those clips and start experimenting and start posting those clips. And so I posted those. I had my first third viral clip and uh, it got to like 250,000 views, you know? Like I said, it, I mean, it wasn't my original content, but it was my start of my content career. Uh -huh. And I just didn't know that. And so uh, I kept posting, bro, got that. Got my 2,000, two, uh, 2, 3,000 followers. And so after that was done, before you knew, bro, six months later, originally it started from 22K, went down to 17K. Uh, six months later, I was at like 60 bands, bro, 60K. So that was really? cool. Yeah, it was cool. Now, now were you never rating these, uh, these uh, little, uh, uh, I guess, screen recordings? Or, or were you just playing them as is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I would just, uh, I would be like, oh, uh, you know, I would, I would go look up specific scenes that I already knew were already catchy. Like, right. oh, whenever uh, Popeye goes, uh, goes and gets Miklo, throws him inside the cell, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to get this scene and then go make a funny caption, bro, and just post it. Boom. Comments coming in, bro. And like I said, bro, just kept doing that. Just kept doing that. And then, like, little by little, started implementing Beyond Scare Straight, started implementing other type of movies that weren't in Chicano, you know what I'm saying? But then, like, I noticed that some of those just weren't working. So you keep on trying stuff. You, you realize that things, certain things don't work, so you just stop doing them, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And little by little, bro, implementing news, uh, even did some music, you know what I'm saying, like that. And then, boom, bro. And then, 44 Vato, bro, came in, like, in 2020, I think. So, 2021, really? yeah. How, how, how's your TikTok doing? Uh, uh, I, got, I got a slight little 600K, bro. So, it's doing it's doing. Oh, 600K. Decent. 600K, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's doing good. Uh, same, same exact thing right there, bro. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing at first, you know, but like I said, bro, you start in the beginning, you have no idea what you're doing. And then you post what works, works, what, what doesn't kick it out the door, you know? And so, bro, now, now I post a news clip and it does 100,000 minimum, you know? Bro, back then I was posting them. I wasn't even getting 10 likes, you know? So it was, <laughs> it was, it was it's a start, bro. You know, all of our starts aren't, they're not going to be good, bro. I'm sure that whenever you started this podcast, it was below average, you know? Well, I, I only thought I was going to be here maybe six months. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying, bro. Look at you now. Congrats on the 100K, bro. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Truly really appreciate that. Yeah. You know, now, um, would you consider, and I bring this up uh, because I, I think it's kind of funny, bro, but I want, I'll explain what I mean by kind of funny. Do you consider yourself an influencer? Yeah, I'm, I'm of course an influencer. Yeah, yeah, and I and I love it because I'm Mexican American, bro. And some people put the Chicano tag on me. I'm not offended whenever they do that. You know what I'm saying? I just consider myself a uh, Mexican American. And my jefita always told me to call myself Mexican. Same. Eres, eres Mexicano, mijo. Same. Eres Chicano. And so, like, she would always tell me, like, if I was doing something stupid, bro, then she would be like, "Mude Chicanito." You know, so like um, that's how I grew up like that, thinking that being a Chicano wasn't good, was no bueno. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So. Uh, that's why I consider myself Mexican, actually, like Mexican American. But if somebody asks me what I am, I'm not gonna say I'm American. I'm Mexican. Yeah, Mexican. You know? I, I grew up, bro. Even as old as I am, bro, I grew up always calling myself a Mexican. You know. Yeah. Um, it was pretty much the the dudes from the hood, you know, the the cholos, if you will, uh -huh. that would call themselves, you know, what Chicano power. You would hear them say that. Yeah. yeah. You know, but uh, like half of my family was born in Mexico, half of I just happen to be born here, you know, but, but you, you trip out on some of the ignorance, bro, because you're, you're actually a pretty tall guy. Yeah. Okay? Six one, six one. Okay. I'm six three. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're bigger than me, bro. Yeah, so, so, but here's my thing. The ignorance of people that tell me, Hey man, you must be half of something. And I was like, why? <laughs> oh, because sure. of your height. And I'm like, what the hell does yeah. that have to do with anything? Yeah, I know, bro. I, know? I have to have to deal with that stuff, but, uh, you know, it is true though. But I, I guess it's just the, the Spaniard blood, you know. If I'm being, if I'm being uh, correct, like I think, bro, that usually Native Americans or or Indios from Mexico weren't that tall anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I think that whenever we get tall genes, it's probably just because of the Spaniards, bro, that came and came to, 
you know, rape all the Indians and whatnot, bro. So. Came and laid, came and laid pipe. Yeah, bro, came and laid some pipe. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And they, and they weren't even plumbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Now, now, where, um, um, forty four Vato? Where originally are you from? Like, where did you grow up at? Oh, I'm from Vatoville, bro. It's this city, bro, that a lot of people don't have access to. So, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It's only the few amount of people, bro. The population is only 44 people. So, you know, you have to, even if you know a friend, even if you know a family member, they can't go there, bro. Restricted access. Okay. So now that you left, is it 43? <sighs> you know, there's always a replacement, bro, but he has to meet the standards. You know what I'm saying? He has to pull a lot of, a lot of hainitas, a lot of tortitas, fool. And he also can't have any felonies. You know, only misdemeanors. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, I see you're wearing a Phillies hat. Are you a Phillies fan? Nah, you know what's so crazy is the Phillies are, they're doing really, really good right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so, Foos were saying, like, bro, you predicted this. Like, you started wearing the Phillies hat at the beginning of 2023. And so, I'm just like, damn, fool, I think I'm the good luck charm, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. Pr probably. Yeah. Now, 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 why the orange mask? Why not a black one? Why not a <laughs> green one or a pink one? Yeah, nah, so I was considering a pink one, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I actually had a homie. He was working at Amazon. And so he, uh, he was working there, bro, in the refrigerating section, right? Uh -huh. And so I had just hit 100,000 followers. Uh -huh. So I promised everybody on 44 Vibe, RIP 44 Vibe doesn't exist no more. It had a 195K, but then it got deleted. Uh, I had 195, I had a, like 90, 98,000. I promised everybody I'm going to do a face reveal. So homie randomly hits me up, bro. Randomly, he's like, hey, bro, look at this mask. These fools are giving these away, like, in a little, like, you just tap a button, and they just drop, and you just pick them up. So he came and dropped it off. I was like, I have an idea, fool. Let me get this mask. Let me put it on my face. So I went live that night, and I, got, I just got 100,000 followers, and I promised everybody, boom. They were like, hey, this fool uh, tricked us, you know what I'm saying? This fool's supposed to show his face, and he didn't. And so it literally came from an Amazon warehouse. Oh, okay. So now, you know what I'm saying? That was back in 2021. Of course, a mask bro is gonna get mad dirty. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, of course, uh, went went straight to the the refrigerator right there, and uh, and I went and I bought like ten more. So now they're all brand new. Yeah. Oh, okay, fridge wear. I I actually used to wear that because I worked right here in Compton. Yeah, for, uh, sure. for about fifteen years, and that's all I wore was fridge wear. <laughs> oh yeah. As a matter of fact, I still got two jackets fridge okay. wear. Shoot. One of them is all black that I promised my homeboy, and then another one's an all blue. But they're actually really good jackets because I I worked in e either a zero degree weather or thirty degree weather. That's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine working 12 to 14 hours and you're falling asleep and you're cold. That's crazy. It's nah, tough, that's bro. A lot, that's tough. a lot, bro. Yeah. Alex, switch, switch it up because uh, unless my shit froze. Anyways, but um, um, another thing I was going to ask you, you post up some controversial stuff, some stuff about the, like, that the news will share. And um, not too long ago, let's talk a little bit about music. You kind of... Uh, had a little interview or should I say a, a zoom interview with uh, a singer a friend of mine named J rocks. Yeah, okay. So what was it that made you like, I guess posted it. Was it something that she said? Can you, can you kind of walk us through like what made you make a video about her? And then eventually you ended up uh, going live with her. Yeah. So pretty much I was just scrolling through TikTok. I ran across the video. I didn't think much of it. You know what I'm saying? I think I probably watched five seconds of it and I just like skipped past it. Uh -huh. And uh, it didn't really catch my attention, bro. But then like soon enough, I started getting tagged. Started getting tagged, tagged, like more and more people. I was like, all right, fool, I'm going to go check out this whole video. Like not the whole YouTube video. I'm not going to lie. I didn't check out the whole YouTube video. But like I told her, bro, and like I told her dad, um, uh -huh. whenever you come across a TikTok video, it's 30 seconds long, 15 seconds long. Most of the time, you're not going to go click on the external link. Of course. You know, and I already knew who you were, but even then, I still didn't go, like, check it out because I've already seen a lot of your interviews anyway. So I was like, well, this is just another, another interview uh, that's, that's catching a lot of buzz. Yeah. And so I see hers, and I decided to watch the whole video, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, nah, bro. I'm like, I don't really rock with what she's saying. And I go into the comments, and they're also not rocking with what she's saying. And so I'm like, all right, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this video and I'm going to just represent everybody. You know, that's, that's, that's saying all, this, all these things about her opinion. Right. You know, and of course, this wasn't personal toward her. It was just what she said and I just disagree with. Of course. So we decided to, uh, to uh, the video caught a lot of views. You know, yeah. it probably did maybe 130K uh, first two days on Instagram, uh, which is kind of hard to do on IG, actually. Uh, but it ended up doing like maybe 250k TikTok, maybe did a, another 100k, and so people were like, "Oh, J. Ross did this, J. Ross did that," and so 
she decided she hit me up. Honestly, didn't even think she was going to reach out to me. Right, right. Yeah, and so she reached out to me, and uh, I think she just like tagged me on her on her on her story or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah, and so then I just DM'd her. I didn't honestly didn't tell her nothing back, but I was like, hey, let's just do the phone call. You know, let's just do the phone call. Let's go to IG live. So we decided to set the time up. IG live. It was high anticipated, um, and so then we went over there, chopped it up, and then I don't know if you saw the whole thing, but. And all that, all yeah. that stuff was said, yeah. but I pretty much stood on my stood on my ten toes, bro. And when the opinion that I had in the beginning was is still the same one. And honestly, right. I didn't I didn't feel the need to apologize to her or her dad, and I didn't and through the entire thing because I still felt like what I said was right. And but I also felt like what she said was also right because you know as her opinion at right. the end of the day. So I can't I can't say like I can't say that she was wrong. Right, you know? right. She she wasn't wrong, man. She she uh. I feel like she was right, and I was also right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I'm glad that you guys can actually uh, talk about it and, mm -hmm. and settle things like that, because a lot of people would just want to argue or just fight, yeah. you know, and, and I'm glad that you actually cleared it up. Uh, when I interviewed her and she said what she said, I'll be honest with you, I agreed with her. Mm -hmm. I, I agreed with her because yeah. me being in the rap game for so long and seeing so many rappers – Especially, let's just narrow it down to Chicano rappers, okay? Uh, I believe Chicano rap started in 1990 when it wasn't even called Chicano rap when Kid Frost came out with a song called La Raza. Then doors started opening up the same year when Melo Menes came out with a song called Mentirosa. Lighter Shade of Brown came out with Sunday Afternoon, okay? Then you had Proper Dose and, and came out with a song called Mexican Power, okay? So... There were just so many rappers during that time, ALT, Nino Brown, Slow Pain, and Chicano rap was booming. And I just want you to consider this, that at that time, everybody had record deals and was on the radio. Here comes the yeah. 2000s. I believe it takes a turn. Some people can debate me and say, no, that's when Chicano rap was at its prime. Mm. I say, no, Chicano rap was at its prime in the 90s because that's when it was most successful. Okay. Record deals. Everybody's touring. We're on the radio. Our videos are getting played. Here comes the 2000s. Now we just have more Chicanos rapping. Yeah. And it's no more record deals, no more airplay, no more videos, unless you post them up on YouTube. Uh -huh. But like YouTube didn't really come out 2005, so to around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So when people ask me about Chicano rap, and I have a point to this. Ask me about Chicano rap. And when it was, you know, the prime, I, I say it was all the 90s. That's when I believe it was the most mm -hmm. successful. Now, when she said about, you know, we don't have any Chicana Britney Spears, you know, we don't have any Chicana Whitney Houston's or whatever the case may be, I have to agree with that because I know you mentioned Becky G, I know you mentioned Snow, Snow the Product and Selena. And I say this respectfully about Selena. Hearing Selena's music, I really didn't hear about it too much until after her passing. After her passing. You know, then that's when the, the whole thing blew up. Yeah. Then you said Becky G. I had never even heard of Becky G. I actually literally had to go Google her. And somebody, t <laughs> somebody told me she's right next door to Long Beach, she's where she's big, from. Bro. She's really huge. Yeah. She's you know. Really so, big. so I asked, I asked girls. Yeah. What is Becky G's biggest song? Because could it be just a social media uh, um, popularity? Because today there's just there's just people that are just popular with no hits. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that's why I was asking. He said, oh, she had a song called Becky G from the Block. It was a remake of J-Lo from the Block or whatever. And I was like, okay. Okay, cool. I'm not going to take nothing away yeah, from her. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said, who else? Okay, and then some girls said, well, you know, Snow's really popular. Now, I asked females. Mm -hmm. uh, Snow's really popular. Okay, I did my homework on her. She was signed to a major label. She got dropped because she couldn't sell records. Yes, yeah, and ultimately, she's not that big as Whitney Houston. You know? Right. So I understand that. I understand the argument right there. Yeah, right. So that's what, I was, that's what I was saying. I, I do believe that as Rasa, we do have those talented people. Uh -huh. I, believe, I, I believe so, too. I, I do. You know, I mean, look, they all come out of Mexico, and we all love and adore them, yeah. but we want them to come out of here. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> we want them to come out of here. Like, we're not denying that, that la gente en México you know, no tiene talento. We're not uh -huh. saying that. You know, but we're saying we want them from here. And I just think a lot of it has to do with bad management. A lot of it has to do with a lot of times the artist not wanting to listen to the producer or the manager. Because let, let, let me say this, and I'm going to pass it on to you. Mm -hmm. I know some talented females and some talented rappers, yeah, okay, yeah. that have managers that don't know shit about the music industry. And right away I say, that guy's going nowhere. 
<laughs> but because the manager sees them yeah. as the money cow. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see it from the start. Yeah. Then I see talented rappers again that have a manager, but the rapper doesn't listen to the manager and the manager knows what he's doing. Yeah. And I'm like, what is it? Then you have these young artists that don't ever want to post even themselves. That's true, bro. I, I, I've had, uh, you know, rappers here that the manager said, hey man, you need to put that you're going to be performing at this event Saturday. I posted when I posted. And, and I was like, what's wrong with posting? His manager would tell me, dude, this guy hasn't posted till last year around this time. <laughs> that's crazy. And, and he's got like 55K followers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's crazy. If you were managing an artist like that and he just never wanted to post, how, how do you manage a guy like that? Uh, I, I, I do know some cases exactly like the ones that you're talking about, bro. And I think that they do such a bad job, bro. It's like, how can you sit up here and say, I want to be the greatest. I want to be, uh, I want to be breaking all these barriers, but you don't post, you know what I'm saying? And then like the thing about it, bro, is two years of inactivity, man, forget even two years, bro. You're talking six months of inactivity and yeah. people forget about you. Forget about it's you. It's like, bro, we're not legends, bro. Like if I stop posting right now, um, for six months, nobody's going to care. Like, if I stop posting right now for two weeks, nobody's going to care, bro. Nobody. Uh, probably a year down the line, you might get a full community post that, that say, hey, where did 44 Vato go? You know, something like that, bro. But, bro, rappers, rappers need to, they're not Drake. Not everybody's a Drake. Right. You know, Drake can go uh, a whole year without posting an album. And then, and then the minute that he posts the album, everybody remembers all the greatness that he's already accomplished. And, um... And go straight on to the onto the new album. Bro, not everybody's a Drake. So I think that rappers need to be posting as much as they can. We're content we're content creators, man. We gotta we gotta push ourselves and, and we do such a bad job, but it's just ego. That's what it is, bro. It's just ego. And people think that, oh no, my last post didn't do so good. So maybe I should post maybe I'm shadow banned. It's like fool, you're not shadow banned. People just aren't rocking with your music. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, bro. No, no, you're absolutely yeah. right. Are, are you a fan of Chicano rap? Uh, I am a fan of Chicano rap, bro. I, I, I uh, I'm also advocate for it uh, to turn to turn like in a in another direction, bro. Because I feel like uh, it is working, but not in the worldwide status, not in the nationwide status. Right. Like if you take a Chicano rap song and you take it to Minnesota, like they ain't gonna play it, bro. No. But if you take a Chicano rap song from Compton and you play it in um in in East LA, they're gonna like it. You know, but bro, it's, it, it's so, you know, you limit yourself. And so I really like, like what Money Science Way was doing. I know that he wasn't, he didn't chunk up the Chicano title. Right. But people did title, title him as Chicano. And that man right there didn't dress up with the white uh, baggy t-shirts and the, and the khakis, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But he was taking it in a different direction and a direction that the rest of the music industry was actually loving. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. Now, now now, I'll tell you one thing out here, and I think it is just an alley thing. I'm starting to think this, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because up north, they don't have a problem. In Texas, they don't have a problem. In Colorado, they don't have a problem. In Arizona, they don't have a problem with saying this. How do you feel about Rasa using the N-word? Oh, Rasa using the N-word. Um, you know, I always say it always depends on uh, where you grew up, you yes. know, where you live. Uh, but at the end of the day, bro, it doesn't sound good in a professional setting. Like if you go up, bro, and you you start telling a, a old a older black man, uh, nigga this, nigga that, like, bro, he might not take it, you know, in the in the best uh, in the best manner, bro. And so, I think that um, if you have a big homie and your big homie's telling you not to say, it, then I think you should respect what your big homie is telling you. But yeah. for me, bro, I don't have a big homie that that tells me like what to do. I don't have a PR. That tells me that I can't say certain things. Now, do I say, uh, nigga, bro, that, that much? Nah, bro. Like, if I'm around the homies, it might be a, hey, what's up, my nigga, like, type deal. But it's not going to be a, like, bro, 10 times in a sentence type deal. You know what I'm saying? Right. I say I say fool more. I say my boy a lot. Like, fools always have, fools are always concerned with me for saying my boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and yeah, I, yeah. they're like, you say my boy too much. You say fool, you need to switch it up. I'm like, fool, y'all were tripping on me when I was saying the N-word. Like, now I switched it to fool and y'all still have a problem with it. And yeah. so that's, that's the thing about it. You can never please the entire world. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. Like, for an example, I had a couple of guys here, and I had to respect them and respect their age, mm -hmm. that when they got here, everything was like, hey, fool, hey, fool. Now, I'm a man <laughs> in my 50s. So growing up, we never 
conducted ourselves that way. I, I would never call another homie a fool. A fool, yeah. It, it, it's almost equivalent to, like, idiot. Mm-hmm. So, and then when guys call me my boy, what's up, my boy? Now, unless maybe you're my age yeah, yeah, and you yeah. say, then I kind of understand. But when I get youngsters, I took it wrong at first. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't want to be these old guys that is always trying to correct these young guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but my thing is this, that, like, um, one guy noticed because he was trying to make me laugh. And he was like, what's up, fool? Come on, my boy. And I just looked at him seriously. And he told me, he said, uh, you know, do you have a problem with me? And I go, yeah, I do. Bro. I said, have I called you anything like that yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. said, no. I said, it's because I respect you. Yeah. So if you respect me, please, I'm asking you, do not call me, you know, a fool or my boy. Or my boy. I, I'm not your boy, bro. And did, and, did that, and did that switch up now? Like, are you still have a problem with it? No, I don't have a problem with it because okay. keep in mind, and I always tell people, I was out of the industry for a long time. So when yeah. I came back, it was like a whole new world to me, bro. It's changed up, yeah. Yeah, it, things changed. So I wasn't understanding the new lingo. You know, I actually had older guys talk to me that knew what I was going through and actually told me like this, you know, Tony, like, don't hate on these guys. Don't tell them their music sucks. Don't tell them this. He said, try to understand it. You know, it, it, it's, it's a different yeah, time yeah, now. You've absolutely. been out of the music for a long time. And it was very, very true. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, well, I like hip hop, bro. I just think this shit sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he go, <laughs> yeah. But ask them, you know, what is it like when trap music came out? I, I still don't like trap music at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But now I ask people today, like, what is it about trap music that you like? You know, and some people, well, I like the beats. I like this. Well, what about this? And I'll play something else. Oh, that's cool too. But I like this. And then I have to understand that this is their world now. I didn't live in their it's world. It's a trend. Yeah, it's a trend. You know, so I, that was, I had to unlearn things and then had to learn some new things. Mm-hmm. You know, like like you, are you a fan of trap music? Uh, you know, bro. Um, I honestly, bro, I listen. I listen to country, bro. I listen to country. I listen to oldies, and uh, and I listen to worship. So that's those are like my top three, bro. Oh, and uh, the, also the the other one too is uh, is the the one the, like the like the Theo music. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like the ones that you know, Juan Sebastian. You got Los Cadetes. You got like a bunch of different artists like that. Uh-huh. Los Tigres, food. That, man, that's that's my that's my thing right there. So those top four right there, I can't I can't uh, I can't go wrong with it. The thing with it, bro, is rap. Rap just like just it just cusses too much, bro. And it just like it says too much things about like violence and stuff like that. So whenever somebody's spitting like a hot sixteen and they don't they're not only talk about guns or girls and they're talking about just real life stuff, real life problems. That to me is the best music. You know, that's something that I could actually listen to. But right. man, if you go to like Drake's new album, uh, or Twenty One Savage's new album, bro, it's the same thing. It's the same. Thing. Okay. It's okay. the same topics, man. Just different words. You know. What, 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 why does it seem, bro? Like, why does it seem? I, I don't know if you've seen this too. Yeah. But one thing that I started seeing it with my second go around when I decided to come back into the music industry, I noticed that when guys get big or girls get big, they all go gay. Oh, okay, okay. Like, uh, like you mean you mean like the industry kind of changes them, or yes, <laughs> or they go demonic, or they go demonic. Or look at the Doja Cat, Doja Cat, Lil Uzi. Yes, you, you can go down the line, bro. Yeah, yes, we can go down the line. So I, I like wonder, like, what is it, bro? Is that like a ritual, like in order for you to because I had a guy named Jerry Heller, rest in peace. He was the guy that uh, managed NWA, yeah, using those guys. Yeah. Okay. One thing about him that he told me like this, if you want to be a thousandaire, you can stay right here. If you want to be a millionaire, he said, you're going to end up seeing the gay mafia. Oh, gosh, bro. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll be honest, that was 1997 when he told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be honest, I kind of didn't believe him, but the more and more and more I saw it, the more I was in the industry, I was like, okay, yeah, fucking true. And then fucking Fat Joe, you guys can Google this, he said that there is a real gay mafia out there. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not talking about hitmen, but we're talking about real... Well, yeah, hit men. So yeah, I, I have I have heard the stories, bro, of uh, you know celebrities being invited to these uh, mansions. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah, they, yeah. And they invite them, and they're like, "Hey, like we would love you to, you know, come up in here, but hold on, like before you go into that room, come into this room real quick." And so they invite them into the room, and then they're like, "Hey, like you know, we got some things that we want you to do. Like, do you wanna, do you want fame? Do you want fortune or something like that?" And uh, and they'll go. Person says yes, bro, and. You know, that's so spread them booty cheeks, bro, and start going off. That, that, you know, that's but, exactly what it seems like, bro. Yeah. That's exactly what it seems like. To me, I'm cool with all that, bro. I just don't, 
I just don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I look. I, I've been around two famous groups. I've been around NWA in the '80s, and I've been around with DJ Quick. Uh, uh, you know, in the early '90s. Uh huh. Okay, I've had my opportunities, but there was a lot of doors that I wasn't willing to go through. <laughs> you know, there, there just isn't. I, I don't want fame that fucking bad, bro. Uh-huh. And there's nothing, there's nothing that could make me ever sell out because I learned at such a young age that money never impressed me. Money never impressed me. And there's women out there that are not impressed by money. And a lot of these guys are going broke, trying not to look broke to try to win some girl's heart that doesn't give a damn about you. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that I know for a fact because I've known dudes that rent cars just to take out a girl. And I'm like, bro, you're going to have to rent out a better car for the next fucking meal. And then the next one, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and believe it or not, they end up spending all their rap money to try to impress this one girl. Doesn't give a damn about you. And I've seen that over and over, not only with drug dealers, but also in the music industry. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I had a guy here not too long ago that wanted to um, ask me to DJ his daughter's uh, quinceanera. He was one of the payment, like 1500 bucks for, for okay. um, um, uh, four hours. I said, no, I'm not going to do no quinceanera. I don't even DJ no more like that. You know, if I do, I'll do a club or I'll do an, an arena where there's a concert. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll give you three grand. No, I'm good. And he said, I'll give you five grand for four hours. And I said, keep your money. I'm not doing it. And here's what he said. Here's where I learned... I earn his respect, he said. This is why I like you so much, Tony, because money does not impress you. That means you can't be bought. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a good trait to have, bro. Yeah. And honestly, whenever uh, I do hear like little stories like that in the mansions and all that sort of deal, bro, it is just all money. But you know, what I, what I always say is that money is not evil, you know? It's the love of the money that is evil. So, so if we love money, bro... You know, I have a friend, bro, that says that says that money is his god, bro. Pretty much, you know. Yeah. Like, man, man won't even spend like ten dollars on a uh, on his homies or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So I don't know, bro. It's a it's a tough thing, bro. And uh, honestly, the world has made it seem like money is everything, and it's not. Yeah. You know, it's okay, bro, to make a living. It's okay to push yourself uh, toward your goals and all that sort of deal, bro. But you can't you can't think about the money like that. Like, there's no way that I'm over here making videos just for the money. Yes, now the check is hitting. You know, but back then it wasn't. And so back then I had to work through everything, bro, through every obstacle without getting paid. You know, everybody, bro, wants to start stuff and, are, and automatically get paid for it. It's like, yes. bro, nobody knows you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. for the rare few that can make a quick buck off of not being known, uh, it's usually a scam or something yeah. illegal. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Many people today want to elevate it to success, but they're not willing to take the stairs. Exactly. Okay. Now, there, there was a verse, a scripture verse that I read when I was 22 years old, and it scared the living hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it, and it read this, for what does a profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? His own soul, yeah. How many people are out there chasing money and chasing money and chasing money and that are still not happy? Oh, uh, man, it's so much, bro. I mean, I've heard so much stories, you know, but it's, uh, it's honestly disappointing, bro, to see that. Uh, sometimes there's even people, bro, that believed in God, and then they get a bunch of subscribers. You know, you look at Mr. Beast, bro. Mr. Beast used to be a Christian. You know, uh, what I'm, I, I'm not sure who Mr. Beast. So Mr. Is. Beast is uh, he's the biggest YouTuber ever. Really? Right now, yeah. He does like giveaway. He does like ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar giveaways. And, and he was a Christian. He was a Christian, yeah. So he literally does like co- competitions like this. Like he gets fifteen different people, puts them inside of this room like this, bro. Just act like this. And he's like, the first person to take their hands off the table wins $25,000, you know? But he won't even do twenty he He'll be like $100,000. Be like, first person to take their hand off will be $100,000. And, bro, people will start leaving. And Jimmy will come up to him, uh, uh, Mr. Beast, he'll come up to him, and he'll be like, he'll come up to a random person. He'll be like, hey, look, I'll give you $5,000 if you just take your hand off the list, off the, off, the, off the thing. And those fools will actually, some of them will take it up because they'll be there for two days straight. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And so, but this guy right here, he used to be a Christian, and now he's not Christian. You know, and, and it makes you think, it's like, bro, did you sell your soul for the fame? Not that you even own your soul, you know, but did you, like, did you really just abandon what, what was good just for you to trade it in with all of this, you know, all of, it, all of this Hollywood lifestyle? You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I just don't think that it's worth it, bro. Wow. Well, yeah. I didn't know that, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah. But you know what? Okay, here's what I heard. And I want people to do their uh, their homework. You know who I also heard was a Christian? Who's that, bro? Uh, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny, yeah. 
I don't, I don't, I didn't know that. I thought, I thought he was just a Catholic. I don't know. No, what well, people have told me now, uh, again, don't, don't mark my words. Go out there and do your homework. But there's been people that have told me that guy used to be Christian and sing in church. I, now I'll tell you what, I know a lot of rappers and a lot of Motown singers that all grew up in church yes. and sold out to the world. Yes. Six nine is also another one. Really? Yeah. Six okay. Nine. Uh, another one. Uh, uh, what's that idiot's name? Um, uh, Beyonce, their first album, uh, the the Destiny's Child album. I don't know if you guys knew, but that was supposed to be a Christian album. That's crazy. Katy Perry too. Oh yeah, yeah, you're you right. You go down the line. Katy Perry is actually a Christian singer. Yeah. Um, man, and it's even controversial to bring it up. But SPM also was too. Really? He was also a, yeah. He's also a Christian singer. Oh, I'll, he was a rapper, I'll, rapper. I'll tell you who also was a, a Christian rapper, and I actually have songs because this person gave them to me. Uh, Snow the product. Son the Friday used to be a Christian rapper? Yes. There's no way. I'll, I'll play it for you if I'll you like. That. That's crazy. Okay. I actually like Snow the Friday too. Like, I still like what she does. And you know what's crazy, bro? I'm Christian. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I've made posts and I'll be like, Jesus Christ, this, Jesus Christ, that. And she'll be like, Amen. And I'll be like, She knows. She knows something. Like, there's there's something going on here, but she, right. she knows, you know? And, well, um, and so, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy to, crazy to see. Yeah, man. So, uh, um, anyways. You had posted something up on your page about a guy, uh, I believe your name is Tim. Tim Hernandez? Tim Hernandez, yeah, Tim yes. Hernandez, yeah. okay, let us know who is Tim Hernandez. Uh, so Tim Hernandez is a Colorado State representative. Uh, he likes to uh, pretty much, you know, talk his talk on social media. And he's pretty much, uh, I'm right, you're wrong type of mentality. Mm. So pretty much if you go against him, He'll tell you that he's gangster and that don't mess with him. He's a gangster? Yeah, that, well, apparently, according to him, he grew up in the suburbs. But uh, he's like, yeah, um, I'm gangster, this and that. And whoever goes against me, like, is going to feel the heat pretty much, right? And so this is only what, what, what was reported by a journalist. Like, I'm not just making this up. Pretty much, I don't know if you saw the viral video. It was Tim Hernandez. And he went up, uh, somebody went up to a, to a protest that he was having. And they asked him, what do you think about the, the innocent kids that are being slaughtered, you know, heads chopped off, uh, uh, mothers being raped on the streets? What do you think about that? Uh, on, on what streets? Uh, on uh, the Hamas versus Israel. Oh, Hamas versus Israel. Okay. Yeah, and he said, uh, he said, he said, what about it? He said, what about it? And so the guy was like, what do you mean, what about it? Like, these people are being killed. Like, what you mean? Oh, that's, all you, that's all you gotta say? He's like, I already told you my answer, something, something, something. And then he's like, man, uh, he's like, you know what? He's like, you're only gonna get like three views on that video. It doesn't matter. And it, the video ended up doing like, man, 20 million. So, wow. yeah, and then, but the journalist that he, that Tim Hernandez told that to went and reported and he said that he threatened, that Tim Hernandez threatened him saying that he was a gangster and that he should have messed around with gangsters because something, can do, something happened. Something and he's happened, a state so. representative, you said? Bro, he's a state representative. And, and I don't know if you've seen bro's classroom, but it was like Black Lives Matter. It was, a, 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 I don't know. I saw bro, a Palestinian like, flag in so there. So much, yeah. You had the LGBT flag. You had everything, you had everything that, you had everything that, Cause he's a teacher. I think he was a teacher right before this. Wow. You have everything in a teacher that you wouldn't want, like to be teaching your kid pretty much. Right. Like, I wouldn't want my kid to have that, have that as a teacher. Well, it's kind of like yeah. today the, the, the trans are going into children's rooms and oh, teaching them, you know, stories out here, especially L uh, used, um, LA unified school district. Uh, yeah. the school has to like, okay, we want it, but it's available if you want trans to come in and talk to your kids mm -hmm. but here's my thing somebody on social media had a great point he said so if uh say i have a co-worker and she's a female and say i just start talking to her about you know i had a wild night last night and i just bring up sex okay that could be sexual harassment uh -huh. because i'm just yeah, it's yeah, inappropriate yeah. absolutely it's inappropriate for adults at work but in school to children it's okay uh, that's crazy. That's not. I mean, it's not okay. No, I know. I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I know it's a rhetorical question. Yeah, it's pero, a rhetorical question. Yeah. But it's like, how how is that you can teach the children that? Bro, I, I don't understand it. I mean, you look at you hear stories of little kids even going up to go protest, and they're like, "There's no way that this book is on the shelf." You open it up, it's talking about like different types of ways to have sex, bro. Yeah. And you like, man, this is this is in the this is yeah. in the schools. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. And so I guess they were. Uh, they ended up getting those books banned, like in some type of district. And they were like, okay, well, if we're going to go off those, off of those standards, let's remove the Bible off of there too. You right. know, not, and most schools don't even have Bibles anymore. Anyway. I know. You know what I'm saying? But they were like, just going to Leviticus and Deuteronomy and just grabbing like little things that, you know, weren't, aren't even, um, 
You, you know, know, they're not even to that to that level, bro, of right. what these other books were saying. You know that that's you know? the only book that gets attacked? Nobody ever attacks the Quran. It's because it's the truth, bro. Why? They, and, and you notice that uh, these, these, the alphabet mafia doesn't go after the, 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 the Muslims. Oh, yeah, no, they don't go after the Muslims, bro. Now, they don't go after them, but like I said, it's because, uh, you know, Christianity is the one that gets attacked the most. You know, Jesus Christ is the one that gets mocked the most. You know, whenever somebody is... They almost have Jesus Christ as a cuss word now. They'll be like, hey, uh, oh my gosh, Jesus Christ. You know? They yeah. won't say, oh my gosh, Muhammad. Like, no, nah, bro. They'll say, oh my gosh, Jesus Christ. Why do they say Jesus Christ? Because they're trying to use him as a cuss word, bro. And it's probably the alphabet mafia that's right behind all of this, bro. Um, trying to brainwash people. Yeah. You know, trying to make people think a different way. Um, it's just, uh, you know, Christianity is the truth, bro. Jesus, I mean, Jesus Christ is the truth, bro. You know, uh, yeah. I want to say this, and then we'll switch gears, yeah. uh, because I do have some gay friends, some male gay friends that I talk to, yeah. and and I just want quite a few. They know where I stand, and they know that I don't agree with their lifestyle. Yeah. But you know what? I respect them, and I still love them. Okay. That's what, yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're called to do too. Yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna tell you what. Um, if I know five of them, three of them were actually raised in the church. That's wild, bro. It, it, it is wild. Yeah, it is wild. Two of them told me that they've been trying to get out, not that anybody's holding them back, but that the temptation's too strong for them to leave. Out of uh, hom homosexuality? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, this guy actually even told me, he, he gave me statistics. He said, for a girl to walk out of a girl-on-girl uh, -girl relationship, it's easier than for a man to walk out of a guy-on-guy -guy relationship. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, so, so that's why I'm like, okay, if that's the case, then this guy just needs to be loved. You know, he, he yeah. needs a friend or blah, 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 you know, to, to be there for him just at least to, to hear him out because obviously he's crying out for help, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm not saying everybody feels that way, but they, at least these are how these friends of mine feel. So, no, that's, uh, I, I, I believe the same way that you believe, bro. Like, uh, we should love them no matter what, right. You know, there should be no way that I'm hating on somebody just because of who they like, bro. That's right. not up to me to condemn. I can't, con I can't condemn. I'm not going to tell them you're gay. You're going to go to hell, <laughs> you know, but the, what the, what, what the Bible says is that, you know, fornicators and people who practice homosexuality won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. So, uh, people say, Oh, you hate LGBT people, but it's like, dude, I'm just going off of what the Bible teaches. And I'm not saying yeah. that I hate this person. I'm trying to bring this person to God and, and, and for God to change them. Cause they can't do it by themselves. Right. You know, if, if it's that hard, bro, like, like you said, uh, that they face the temptation that hard. That is something, bro, that is going to be have, have to be handled by God. And you already know when you come to God, you don't have to change yourself. He's going to change you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a lot of people didn't expect 44 Vato to be talking like this. Uh, you already know, bro. 44 Vatos. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So on your page, you had a guy that got arrested with a Chucky doll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was up with that? Uh, they told me that it was actually this exact same Chucky doll, bro. For real? Right yeah. That's probably him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, uh, so there was this guy in Mexico. He... Uh, he got arrested for uh, having a Chucky doll. And I guess they were like hitting people. They, they, they were robbing people on the streets in Mexico. So he had a doll and was robbing? Yeah, in, in Coahuila. So what, I think what he would do is that he would oh, get the Chucky doll. Yeah, and, and they would put it like on, he would put it on one side. And so these people would get scared. Like some people would just walk up, they would get scared. And then these people would run this way. The guy was over there waiting for them with the knife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like with the real knife. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he would scare them with the little Chucky doll that the guy would encounter them over there and just. You know what I'm saying? Do what he had to do. Wow. You yeah, said it's but, go quick we left because that's where my family's Coahuila. from. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe it's my cousin. Oh, Monclova? Uh, Torreon, Coahuila. Uh, Torreon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, they were in, uh, in Monclova. Okay. Monclo uh, but Monclova is in Coahuila, right? Yes, I think yeah. so. I'm going to have to ask my brother. It is, yeah. It's, it's a border. I think it's a, It's almost a border town. It's like right there, uh, uh, Eagle Pass, Texas. Damn, I can't believe somebody used a Chucky doll. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, uh, I mean, they took the, they took the mugshot of the Chucky doll and then they also took the mugshot of the guy too that was also doing it and so uh, and then you had the cops over like taking selfies with him and stuff like that and I think like a few of them got fired even you know what I, I wouldn't want that damn doll because I could just imagine that damn doll probably has some kind of demon in it or something <laughs> uh, can you imagine you take the, the, the mugshot of the doll and then he says wanna play oh god bro. you know what I'm saying I'm kind of scared bro I'm telling you I'm scared right now bro you know, what, you, know kind of <laughs> you know what's crazy about yeah, yeah. Chucky dolls that they literally scare little kids, bro. Because that's kind of like when when you have a doll, bro, that's evil. It invades the, the little kid's world. Yeah. No, so when that bad. dude's walking around with a damn knife, uh -huh. you know, I, I have a niece named Diddy. She's older now. Congratulations, uh -huh. she had just had twins. So much oh, love. Congrats, yeah, congrats. And um, when she was a little girl, her mom would play Chucky, and she grew up 
eat, still having nightmares. Oh, Chucky. Yeah, Chucky. Yeah, Chucky's yeah, following me in a skateboard with a knife. Uh -huh. You know, like, she was terrified, bro. Yeah, no. Nah. And that's the reason, bro. Honestly, that's why I don't even watch scary movies. Because I got traumatized, bro, at eight years old. I was watching The House of Wax with my older cousins. The House of Wax. The House of Wax. It was this, this movie about, like, some wax figures. You know what I'm saying? People uh -huh. were getting their fingers chopped off and, like... Bro, they were like pretty much grabbing real people and they were throwing them in this house of wax and turning them into house into a into a wax figures. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? But uh but uh the people were still living like they were just frozen, bro, but they were they were just wax yeah. figures, but they were real people. And so they were just getting people one by one and taking them into the house of wax and it was just terrifying, bro. Like people were getting their uh, their feet dragged. And so like that was kind of one of the reasons why I never slept with my feet out. Like on off the bed, you know what I'm saying? And so the thing with it, with the, the thing with scary movies is I don't watch scary movies, bro, because it's gonna pervert my mind, bro. Like I haven't I haven't watched a scary movie since then, bro. Like imagine if I had watched a scary movie of me going outside to the car and me just getting like stabbed like this, bro. Like yeah, yeah. I had never seen that before. But say I watched a scary movie now and then I went to go do that same action. I, I would be like, bro, I'll be scared. I'll be like, oh, hell no. I, saw, I already saw this in the movie clip. Like, right, bro. right, right. Contrary to like right now, I go out there, bro. You know? They don't nothing, go to bro. Universal Studios because they have the Halloween haunt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nah. I, love, I love going there. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not scared of uh, like haunted houses or no. I think that is funny. I think it's a joke, bro. Like, I, 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 uh, I've been to them like two years ago. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, now, what do you do now? Because I know you're out here visiting. Uh, I did a, I did a, I went to this creator panel earlier. Okay. Yeah, so I was at a creator panel earlier. Um, we're just just linking up, bro. It's a beautiful thing to see uh, so much content creators, bro, come together. You know, you had a Jay Mendoza Concrete Live. Uh, you even had like some some Chicano Chicanos there. Like uh, this is dude named OG Kid. He dresses like like pretty much. If you went to like the '60s, bro, in LA, that's who you was. Like he looks exactly like that, bro. He even talks like it. It's so crazy. And uh, you had like 40 to 50 content creators, bro. And there was a, there was a speaking panel. They were pretty much just speaking and just telling people like what they should do. Everybody in there was a content creator. So it was really nice, bro, to see everybody pull through. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and what was this at? What city was this? Do you remember? This was uh, downtown LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would have thought I would have, cause I know Concrete, he's been here a couple of times. Uh -huh. uh, um, last night I was about to go to a couple of events, but I couldn't end up making it, bro. I just had too many things going on. And some like last night, it was Paul Rodriguez, a comedian. I was supposed to go there. Chicano Comedy Fest? Yeah, so I was supposed yeah, to go we there. Were, we were always, we were always going to go. Yeah. Oh, you, you were going to go? Yeah, we were going to go, but we just went to the beach instead. Oh, okay. And then yeah. we went, I went, I was supposed to go to El Velorio uh, by a guy named Antonio Pelayo. He works for Disney. He throws right. it every year. Right. And I just couldn't make it, bro. I just have a lot of things going on. But um, I usually like to I try to I attend a lot of events like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm very selective of where I go because one thing I do know, there's a lot of guys that, that are everywhere, bro. At every event, they're there. And after a while, you're like, I'm getting tired of seeing his ass. <laughs> like, I see him yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Like, please, let me miss you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me miss you. It's about being like less available, huh? That, that's exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's bro. what it is, bro. And uh, and honestly, bro, that's why I'm very selective about where I go to. And bro, two years ago, three years ago, I was uh, I was uh, attending these uh these how these uh, uh warehouse parties. You know what I'm saying? And some of them, bro, were in South Central. Some of them were in Compton. You know what I'm saying? I was and I was pulling up to them, bro. But I was putting myself in danger because I was running by myself, bro. I don't got no security. I was running by myself. I even had the mask on. You know what I'm saying? And I was just there just to get my clout up, I guess. Right. But it was kind of a stupid thing. Now that I look back at it, like, I'll never go to them ever again. Right. Yeah, and so, like, especially if I'm running with my girl, bro, like, I don't want to put in situations like that. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm very selective about what I where, what I do and where I go now. Okay. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you this. It, it, as far as you running your page, do you get a lot of hate on your page? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get absolutely. Especially DMs. They always right. say the same exact thing, though, bro. Like what? Take off the mask. You're probably ugly inside. I'm like, fool, you hide too. You hide from your ops all, all day. Like, like, you just do it in a different form. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, like, right. I have my face with the mask. You hide your face from the ops. You know what I'm saying? They, they do that. And they hide yeah. their face with fake profile pages. And yeah. I, I just, I, me, I try to understand people that really, re, I don't know how you can, even if I had a day full of nothing to do, just to relax yeah. i don't have the time to make a fake page just <laughs> yeah, to go on somebody else's page so i could tell them off yeah 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 yeah. you know i i don't i don't understand that's why when people say oh, they're trolls uh -huh. like it took me a while to understand a troll here's what i didn't understand so this is a guy that sits at home on his phone or on his computer and they're like yeah so he'll give himself a name like larry you know 
Brumfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Larry Brumfield. He gets any picture. Sometimes he doesn't even put a picture. Okay, now what does he do once he does the fake page? Or he'll go on the guy's page that he doesn't like and talk crap on his comments. He go night bang. Call and I'm night like, bangers. so when somebody told me what was a troll, I'm like, you mean there's really people out there like that? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't believe it, bro. Yeah, man, uh, it's so funny, bro. I mean, I've had people that keep making po keep making pages. Keep I block one, I block the next one, I block the next one. Then now I go to TikTok, bro. Again, it's, it's the same as that comments and it's different different uh, profile name and stuff. And I'm like, bro, it's the same as that dude. I've even I've even went to the extent of blocking people on YouTube, bro. I never thought I'd see the day I had to block somebody on YouTube. Block somebody on YouTube, bro. And that's my first ever person I've ever blocked. But what I love is that on Instagram it says block this account. And block every single account that they make. Yes. <laughs> and so I just click on that. Boom. They're gone forever, you know? Yeah, they're gone forever. No, but yeah. you know what? I still get them because it, uh -huh. there's people that just... And it's usually the same same person. She, she know, And it, and it's a it's a fat female, too. She, she, <laughs> she knows who she is. La tortita? <laughs> yeah, no, but she's more than a tortita. She's a possum. Yeah, yeah. But anyways. But, uh, okay. Okay, so now, uh, um, you had did an interview with King Little G. King okay, Little G, yeah. Okay, and how, how did that come about? Uh, well, with King Lil G, I think he was, uh, I think I was in Denver at the time, bro. So I, I pretty much, uh, I saw that he was coming in, you know, and I was there and I decided to, to, uh, to DM him, you know, me and him were already pretty cool, bro. So I just DM him. I was like, Hey bro, like, let's do a podcast. Let's do an interview. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, I F with you, bro. Like, let's do it. And so, uh, I booked the studio, bro. I came in and then, um, it was like in a week. It was like a week from the time that I hit him up. And so then uh, we we all just pretty much linked up. I honestly didn't think he was gonna pull up because I was like, man, this man, this man's probably busy, you know. Um, but so I so he pulls up to the studio, and we just get it rolling. And I didn't recognize who he was because he had a mask on. So I had a mask on. He also had a mask on. Upon introducing ourselves, we I didn't have a mask on, but he did. And I he pulls up with like five people, but I didn't know who he was. I was like, which one is it, bro? Which one is it? Oh. You know, yeah. And I was like, which is little G. And then I seen like a face tag like pop up, like, you know, creep up through the mask. I was like, oh, this is a homie. And so uh, then we would just go in there. We bust it out. Uh, he's pretty much everything, bro, that, like in the interviews, like what, what everybody sees pretty much. Um, I honestly wish he would have taken off the mask, though. I feel like we would have done even more views, you know, but he had a mask on. Though, probably, so. yeah. probably. Uh, it, if yeah. I would have, like me personally... Like I know this, if I can call it, this is your gimmick. This is how how you mm -hmm. you know portray yourself. Yeah, it's a character. Yeah. Okay, it's a character. I get that. Like a uh, a while back, that fool's gone wild guy. Who's gone okay, wild? It was maybe about two and a half years ago. We had talked, and he had said he would do it. You know, and then I just asked him, like, "Are you gonna do it without your mask or with your mask?" He goes, "No, I'll do it with my mask." And I said, "Okay, that's your gimmick. I get it." Okay. Yeah, yeah. But me personally, like, I have a friend in Marvelous that I do shows with. But because he's getting uh, uh, work done in his bottom teeth, he has a complex about himself. So he doesn't want to show that he has missing teeth. Oh, yeah. So he wears a mask. Oh, he wears a mask. I can respect that. Uh -huh. But if somebody just wants to come in just to wear a mask, I wouldn't do the interview. Just to wear a mask. Oh, you're saying like uh, like if they had already shown their face and they were already yeah. going for their face? Yeah. I get it, that, bro. Now, I do I do understand that. And I said, I wish he would have taken it off. But, man, even on the thumbnail, bro, I just decided to go to another interview get that uh get a screenshot and then just upload it to mine because i was like man because you know i you know we're trying to do some views bro we're trying right. to do some numbers like of course we don't just do this just for uh just for just to keep it on unlisted you know just for our friends no, to watch no, you know, we're trying to actually reach out to the entire world uh -huh. um but uh now nah, man he's cool bro he's cool and uh what i loved about him is that he was like hey bro like come out to my show later so i was like well i was like damn bro you even buy me to a show cool bro so i shook his hand and uh, he hopped in. He hopped in his ride. He took off, bro. And then by the nighttime, uh, uh, his manager was like, "Yeah, bro, come through to the back." And then King Loji brought me out. So that was like a pretty big, like, uh, um, like event for me in my career. Yeah. Like King Loji bringing me out, bro. Because like whenever I was rapping, I used to rap back in 2020. Really? Yeah. So uh, whenever I was rapping, bro, that was the man who I wanted to get signed to. Okay. You know, cause just because he sells such a good image, mm -hmm. I guess like. To some people, it's a good image. Like, to me at the time, it was a really good image. Um, and so he was kind of like a dude in the music industry who I was looking up to, bro. So for him to bring me out, I said, damn, bro. I was like, damn, bro, I really reached this position. I was like, damn, bro, I'm really blessed, bro. This did is, you rap? This is dope. Uh, did I rap where? Uh, at the show. Oh, no, no, no. Like, he brought me out. He was like, hey, uh, 
give it up for the homie 44 Vato, like that, like pretty much like that. And he let me like throw merch on the stage and stuff like that. It was uh, cool though. Nah, but he doesn't know me for rapping. He knows, he knows me for blogging and okay. you know, stuff like that. So, Is there any music out there of yours? Uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. 44 Vato, yeah. 44 Vato. So are you still recording? Uh, nah, man, but I'm still writing though. I'm writing, but I'm just not recording. But it's only just due to me kind of not really knowing what direction to take it. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know that I could rap. Um, I, I always, whenever I get the chance, bro, to brag about my music, I always do it because one of my, one of my uh, music, one of my uh, songs, bro, it hit 30 million impressions and then it did 2 million streams and I got paid off of it and everything. But the problem was that I stole the beat from someone. So um. they came through and then they deleted the track. And so it was already, it was already on Spotify, Apple, every single thing, bro. But right, they right. It. It's still on, it's still on, uh, on SoundCloud. So, so you I just believe. rapped over somebody's track, in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But pretty much, um, on SoundCloud, if you go on there, bro, it still has, I don't even know, like maybe 300, 400,000 views, uh, streams. Okay. So I'll, I'll, have to t I'll tell you what it is. It's cause I was going by a different name, bro. So that's why okay. I can say it right now. But, uh, but yeah. And then, uh, and I actually was rapping through the 44 Vato mask as well. I have a I have a song named um, Life Survive. Life of what? Life Survive. Li life is a vibe. Oh, life is okay. Life Survive. I think it's okay. called that. Is it called that? Life Survive. Yeah, Life Survive. And so um, it's cool, bro. That song that song is really cool. So so how long are you gonna be out here? Uh, I'll be out here, bro, for maybe uh, two more days. Okay. You know what I'm I think I want to link up with the uh, Compa Raider. He's in San Fernando Valley. Trash Bag Boys. Trash bag boys. Trash bag boys. Uh, he's Compa, he, his name is Compa Raider. He has like this sushi restaurant and he does a bunch of different stuff. He had this like recent um, promotion. It was called uh, No J Cats Allowed or something like that. He's like pretty much promoting his shirts and all that. Yeah, man. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely a character, bro. He's cool, though. He's really cool. That'll work. That'll work, man. Yeah. yeah okay, now I hit you up and I said I want you to come through. Uh, uh, what made you say yes? Uh, I'm, bro, I mean, man, I, I, I've, been, I've been watching you for a long time, bro. And honestly, uh, maybe two years ago, I think I saw Tony A. And I was like, Tony A. I was like, who's this guy? I was like, oh, he's a, he's a podcaster and he, uh, he interviews people. I was like, man, I'm also like, I also want to get interviewed by him too. But honestly, bro, the, so, some of the pride in me, I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to reach out to him, bro. Like, I don't want to reach out to him because he doesn't know me. Like, right. I can't just say that. I've gotten rejected, bro, by, by a few people. And I was like, I don't, want, I don't want Tony A to reject me, bro. I was like, I don't know this guy. I didn't know you at the time. And I was like, you know what, though? I'll follow him. And you follow me back. So you followed me back. But then, like, two years down the line, which is, like, right now, uh, I think the J-Rocks thing happened. You said, hey, yeah. you trying to get on the show? I was like, let's do it, bro. Next time I'm in LA, I'll, I'll hit you up and we'll yeah. get it rolling. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's funny because I talked to her, I talked to her dad. You know, her dad yeah. He's a Cowboys fan just like me. Oh, so yeah. much love and respect to Freddie. And, and uh, he called me, and he was kind of hot. Like, <laughs> man, I can't believe this guy did this, this guy did this. And I was like... It's just his opinion, bro. Yeah. It's okay. But then when he said, oh, Jay's going to go live with him, I was like, okay, cool. I like the way she handles herself for mm -hmm. her being young, a young girl, you she know? She can talk really good. Yeah, and and her, her dad, I'm glad that he jumped in there too, you know, because, you know, as he should, that's, that's his daughter. You know, he loves her Absolutely. very much. And that's one thing that every time we talked, I've always said, man, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything you already know, but you need to take care of your daughter, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of parents out there that, I'll be honest, with you, don't give a shit about their kids, bro. Yeah, that's true. They, they just don't. I've interviewed girls that were 18, 19 years old, and I, I'll ask them, like, uh, off air, like, you know, does your father, like, in your life, as far as your music? And he was like, I haven't seen him since I was three years that's old. That's crazy, yeah. You know, and I'm like, uh, and that's one thing that I admire about him, being in her life like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good thing. I think he does a specific, uh, a very terrific job, bro, like, doing his, uh, the way he treats his daughter, the way yeah. he supports her, bro. He's like, I'm her number one fan. Uh, I support her more than she supports herself, bro. That's huge. That's huge for any type of a yeah. any type of artist, bro. You need that, bro. That's yeah. why, like, I'm so thankful for her because she. I think she supports me more, more than I support myself. And so, um, for him, bro, I, I understand where, where where he was coming from. He was like, bro, it's because you're kind of like bringing a lot of backlash to my daughter, bro. Like, I really do support her, and for stuff for stuff like this to pop up, it's kind of like. Like, would you want that for yourself? I was like, well, I mean, I kind of do like backlash, you know what I'm saying? I do like it. But uh, for, for her, she's very early, early on in her, in her career, bro. So it might be a little different. And uh, I just didn't think it was going to be something like dangerous. So that's the only reason why I, was do why I do stuff like that. Like, right. I don't want to put somebody in a dangerous position, bro. Like, I don't want to say this person falsely did this. Nah, bro, I'm not going to say that. Like, it was just a music opinion. So I knew that I could report on something like that. 
without any repercussions from uh, from the community. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. I don't want to. I don't want to endanger her. Right. You know she's young, bro. Yeah. No. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Very young. Um, but I had a question for you. As far as you mentioned podcasting, you had interviewed King Little G. Have you done any more other interviews the other than him? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done uh, Parkside Plugs, which is Money Science Way's cousin. Okay. Um, I did Lalo Gone Brazy. Um, well, King Lil G, of course. And then who was the fourth one? Fourth one. Fourth. Is this something you, you want to continue to do? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, bro. It's just uh, some of the times, bro, it's just like you reach out to a rapper and like they'll take like two, three days to respond, you know? And so I'm just like, ah, bro, like. I kind of wanted to do it this day. Maybe it, maybe it's my fault a lot of times, bro. Maybe it's my fault. But it's just like I'm kind of a spontaneous type of guy, bro. So if I want to do something tomorrow, I'll just be like, okay, let's do it tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not much of a planner, bro. I don't just go start planning a trip three months in advance. I'm more of a like, hey, like, man, this, like, tomorrow looks like a good day to go to, to, to New Orleans or something like that, to Austin. And so I just get up and go. And so for me, bro, I try to book these interviews like, I, I tried to book one yesterday, but he took, like, a day to respond. And I was like, ah, bro, like, I'm only out here for so long. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I can't really wait like that. And so uh, I told him, like, pretty much I couldn't, bro. And then some other guys, sometimes, bro, things happen where even just the studio cance cancels on you. So you can't do the interview. I tried to interview this TikToker um, named uh, JD3. I was trying to, trying to get him on my podcast, bro, yeah. but it didn't happen because they canceled on me. But I really mm -hmm. wanted to get him on there, bro, because this guy is not very known, but he's a comedian out of South Central LA. Okay. So I was like, I like to catch these dudes before they reach yeah. reach a stardom level. I don't know. I, I just, I try to just see it. Of I'm course. like, this guy's funny, bro. This guy can make a name for himself. Like later down yeah. the road, like, let me just catch him right now. See what he does on an interview. It might be his first one. He might be nervous, but that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that, bro. Earlier, when you said that about J Rocks, you said, I don't want to get her in trouble or, or I don't want to cause anything, uh -huh. you know, that may hurt her career. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I do want to say this because I, I do have a lot of podcasters that watch me. Uh, one of my boys, and I'm going to give him credit for this, Norbert, he told me, You're the podcast that all the podcasters watch. And I've seen some podcasts that try one guy told me this the grimier the question the better the views i'm not gonna do that bro. <laughs> like i'm not gonna do that yeah. uh for an example there was just one guy that sat right here and he said before we went live because i don't want to talk about my my drug past oh okay he said I, i've been to the pen and i was a big time drug addict mm -hmm. he said, i don't want to talk about it. don't worry about it so we just went around him talked about his you know yeah, yeah, yeah. his life after he told me man i I fucks with you, Tony. I respect you. He says, um, let me tell you why. He said, because I told another podcaster that. I don't want to talk about my drugs. I don't want to talk about my penitentiary days. He said, did it. We went live. He goes, it was my very first interview. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I was already nervous as it was. And his fucking first question was, you know, so you were a tweaker? Oh, hell no, bro. And yeah. I was disrespectful. And, and I said, disrespectful. you know what I would have done, bro? And he goes, what's that? I would have just got up. Got up and left. I would have just got up and left. He didn't, yeah. he didn't respect you. At all. Uh -huh. He was shooting for the views. So there's a lot of podcasters out there that need to be ashamed of themselves uh -huh. for asking some of these guests that are somewhat nervous that wanted this interview, but are somewhat nervous. And like, I'll give you a perfect example. There was a guy sitting right here, bro, that was ready to incriminate himself. He was so nervous. He started almost confessing the crime that he did. Oh, ah, yeah, no. And I, you know what I said? Yeah. Uh, go, let's go ahead and press pause right there. We're going to go ahead and take a break and we'll come right back. Oh, yeah. When we went to break, he goes, thanks, bro. He said, I couldn't stop. I couldn't, I couldn't fucking stop. He just couldn't stop. He just, he was just so nervous, bro. His head was sweating uh -huh. and he, you know, he was like this and he was drunk and he was just going with the flow. Now that would have been a, a, um, uh, uh podcaster's wet dream oh, yeah, to yeah. get him to, to confess yeah. to some confess something like that some bro. dj vlad type stuff yeah yes bro yeah. and a lot of guys are doing that for the views now they could say well of course we're doing it for the views i, I there's guys that have said i'm here for the cheese man <laughs> you know go for it but <laughs> cheese, man. but sometimes when you do that to the person you're interviewing you can put that guy in a lot of trouble bro uh -huh. yeah you know, you go, you get away with the views, but now well, what he said might come back and catch him, mm -hmm. you know, down the road. Yeah. It's kind of, you kind of look at a, a Kev D or Keith D. Keith, Keith D. Man, yeah. Bro, I think they, they went on a DJ Vlad interview and they picked some stuff up and that's what they use as their evidence. I, I know. I, and and I, 
Me, I don't trust that guy. And I know a lot of known rappers that have turned that guy down multiple times. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm not going to go incriminate myself. Like, uh, uh, I thought this one guy told me, I'm going to go on there. And if he hits me up about music, what should I say? He asked me, I go, you're asking me? Yeah, your podcast, what should I say? Well, ask him this. What does that have to do with my music? <laughs> That's what you tell him. Turn, turn it right back around him. Uh -huh. What does that have to do with my music? Uh -huh. You know, I'm not here to talk about when I used to be a blood. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. I understand that. But, you know, now, uh, as far as um, controversial topics on your page, what are some of the, the controversial topics, bro, that, like, maybe you might have said, Man, maybe I shouldn't do that one. Let me just go ahead and, you know, report the news because you're always pointing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking news out of L.A. Yeah. Do, right does anything come out? Yeah. Does anything pop into your mind right now that that you might have posted and said, like, okay, that one was, pro I was probably skating on thin ice. Maybe I shouldn't have done that one. Oh, uh, yeah, bro. Every single time that I post the LGBT uh, really? post, yeah, because you got to think about it, like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not with that whole, with that whole stuff, bro. Whenever, like, they go, you know, do drag shows at, at, at kids' events and all that sort of deal, bro. So I usually, like, go report on those type of things and then I go post them, bro, just because I know that people feel my same wrath, bro. And then they go go ahead and go comment. And it's just to keep them updated, bro, because sometimes the news isn't reporting on that type no, of stuff. No, they're not. So, like, it's my job, bro, to come out there and expose the evil, bro, in the world. So, you know? Right. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm called to expose the evil, bro, through the Bible. The Bible tells me to do so. So, <laughs> yeah. Once again, they didn't expect 44 Watt to be nah, talking yeah, like that. I know, I know, bro. <clears throat> I, I can't really recall the verse, but I did study it, and I, and I remembered it, but then I forgot it. Which now, one was that one? I can't, I can't remember it, bro. But it said, like, expose the evil. I forgot what it was. Okay. Maybe in Hebrews or something like that. I don't even know. Okay. Ma 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 next time, make sure you sharpen your sword before you come over here. Because people are thinking <laughs> right now, you're just swinging like a piñata. At a piñata, which blindfolded. Yeah. No, you, I, I, I know scripture. a lot of verses, bro. I know a lot of verses. It's just uh, just that one, man. I don't know it's what okay, it it's was, okay. bro. It's okay. Like, now, what made me want to ask you some of these biblical questions, because I saw in your bio, you had Joshua 1.8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it talks about meditating on the word and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. That's why I... I when people put those things on their bios or on their pages, I just tend to ask it because I want to kind of get a feel for them, you uh -huh. know, and see where they're coming from with that. Yeah. Because I think, I do believe that when somebody does post something like that, they really do truly stand for something. And I have to yeah. applaud that. Uh -huh. I would rather have somebody fall trying to do something right than not even try at all. Not even try. Yeah. And I, I understand that, bro. And so every single time, man, I, I go ahead, bro, and go post on my bio, you know, a Bible verse, bro. Joshua one eight was my was my last one, bro. And my last one, I think, uh, before that was uh, Matthew seven seven or something like that. But um, you know, those are all just things, bro, that I just do. I try to I try to just do it all for God, bro. I mean, I'm already saved, bro. I'm already Christian, so um, there's pretty much everything that I do from here on out, bro, is just uh, to show my appreciation. Like I'm not trying to get saved. I'm already saved as it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's my it's my road to to be thankful, bro, to be grateful. You know, mm -hmm. and so uh, and so that's just what I do. Yeah. Okay. Now, is that hat? Is, is that a symbol of the helmet of salvation? Uh, which one? Oh, the hat. The what hat you wearing right now? Nah, bro. <laughs> nah. All nah, good. Yeah, nah. Okay. Now, now, when you post up the whole LGBTQ uh -huh. XYZ, yeah. you know, premium plus, uh, um, you get a lot of hate. Does it come mostly from men or from women? Uh, that comes from non-binary people, actually. Damn. Yeah, bro. People that don't have a male or a female type of. You know, they're just blank down there. They're just blank, bro. Yeah, they're just blank. So uh, those type of people are the ones that, that hate on me the most, bro. And, you know, I've, I've went downtown, bro. I've done my interviews. And every single time I see, I see a gay person or, like, I just assume that he's gay, I go up to him because I got a lot of questions to ask him. G give me some of the questions that you be asking him. Well, I say, would you rather want your kid at a drag show or at church? And so I've had a person that says, I would rather want them at a drag show because a priest is the only, um, is the only person in a costume that that is having sex with children or something like that yeah something like that bro and so man i like the catholic community was like what like what this man say you know what i'm saying like right. we're going crazy bro and one of those one of those videos actually did maybe 500k on instagram wow. so man yeah it went up bro it's still it's still doing a lot of numbers right now as we speak but uh but yeah so i asked him that i asked him uh um do gay people go to heaven so that's what i asked him yeah. But uh, but yeah, man, I, I honestly don't encounter too much people. I know that they were saying that like 12% of people in the United States are now gay. I think that that's, I think that that's false, bro. They're just saying right. that they're just trying to spread a, 
spread some false yeah. uh, some false news. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, we don't have nothing against them. It's just that yeah. I like to ask questions, and the, t- the people that I, I do ask questions, they're very open and honest with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, on that. But but the whole non-binary thing, and then the whole pronoun thing. Oh, yeah, bro. You know, she, he, they, boom, bang, zoom, whatever the hell <laughs> they call themselves, bro. Like, I just don't get that, bro. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't sit in a room and somebody said, you got, you need to refer to me as the pronoun. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't do that, bro. I'm yeah. like, the hell with this, you know, but. That, um, yeah, that was one of the videos that actually went viral, bro. Because I asked one of the dudes, I said, hey, man, what are your pronouns? I already knew that it was a hot question, bro. Yeah. And bro was like, he, him, they, them. And then I asked the, the other guy, I said, they, them. I was like, bro, these dudes are tripping. Like, nobody even does. That's not even real. Yeah, bro. it's not even real. Yeah, it's not even. This is these are just like false little illusions that they just make up in their head. I told this one guy that mine is thou. Thou, yeah. So when you see me, one knee me. <laughs> okay. Then my yeah. adjec- my adjective is el sexy de Wilma. So that's how I want to be. Wilma, yeah, yeah. I, I want to be identified as el sexy. So next time you see me, respect my adjective, el sexy de Wilma. Okay. So don't come at me. You know, and I'll I'll call you boom bang zoom rough or whatever you want to yeah, you know, yeah. but yeah, that that was the part that I, I had a hard time with, but the whole nine non-binary was I don't consider, but you know what? There was a shooting in Colorado. I don't know if you remember. There's a guy that shot at a gay bar, and then when they arrested him, he identified as a non-binary. So it, it wouldn't be considered a, a hate crime. Same. That's crazy. You know, so he actually literally found a loophole for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wants to go and do that, this guy in Colorado laid the blueprint. Just claim you're non-binary. Man, that's so crazy, bro. And what's so crazy is the media didn't even pick up on that on that news on that no. news topic. But it be, it's because it didn't fit the agenda. Right, right. No. It, and, and then there's another one that said uh, some guy said on Instagram. He said, um, "Man, I wanted to beat this girl's ass so bad. So what I did, I just identified myself to to her as a woman." Oh, yeah. He said, yeah, "I'm a." Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cases like that, man. I think uh, before you know, I think LeBron's going to identify as a girl, bro, and go dominate the WNBA. Hey, bro. Well, you, you know what? Like, they were asking, um, I think it was Pierce Morgan. Yeah. I think it was him. He said to these non-binary people that are four uh, uh, men playing in these women sports, uh-huh. they said, if Mike Tyson would identify himself as a woman, would you allow him to? <laughs> I, and they said yes. They said yes? <laughs> they said yes. I'm like... Wow. I, I don't know if you saw the but there was a viral video of this guy, bro, who uh pretty much uh there was this there was this girl who was saying that now she claimed that she was a man. So they were like, All right, we're gonna throw you in a MMA fight. So they threw her in there, bro, within like ten seconds, she got destroyed, bro. And it it was kinda it was kinda ugly, bro, but it was like, Man, bro, this is why y'all need to stop doing this. Yeah, stop. You know, doing it's it. kind yeah. of it's just a just an example. They kinda just made an example out of her, but it's like, Well, I guess it's legal. You know, yeah. you wanted that. You wanted that ass whooping. So yeah. So so so, so what do you identify as? Uh, he, him, they, them. Now I'm playing. <laughs> nah, I, I, I uh. Forty four vato. I'm forty four, bro. I'm a I'm a full. What is it? Full vato. Yeah, full vato. Full vato. All good. All good. Now let me ask you, forty four vato. Do you come from a big family? Uh yeah, bro. I got a. You know, we we're seven in the family. So really. Yeah yeah yeah. And and, and your parents from Mexico. My parents, yeah, yeah, they're they illegal immigrants from um from Zacatecas. They're not illegal no more. They got they're citizens, bro. So right, no, right. Nobody that's watching this, you can't, you guys can't deport them. You right. Know what I'm saying there's nothing I to do about it, bro. But yeah, they're from Zacatecas. Uh, we go out there every every year, bro. There's a currently like a battle zone like in Zacatecas right now because they're trying really? to trying to like the two biggest cartels are trying to clash, bro, and they're trying to take over that entire state. But it's hard, you know. And uh, but yeah, man, we we try to go out there, bro. All the time. What, what what part of Zacatecas? Uh, Loreto. Loreto, Zacatecas. Loreto? Loreto, okay. yeah. Kind of like Loteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So L-O-R-E-T-O, yeah, Loreto. Loreto, Zacatecas. Okay, that'll work, that'll work. Okay, man, it's give cool. me some more topics, bro, that you be covering. Or or some of, some of your favorites, bro. Like, because uh, um, I can go on your page right now, but I want you to kind of give us some, mm-hmm. like some of the, your topics that you love to cover on there. Yeah, you know what, bro? The, the, the cartel ones. The really? cartel ones, yeah. But the, the thing about it is that a lot of times they get reported. Oh, and so really? I have to be very, very cautious on if I'm re- reporting on El Chapo's son, for example. Like, just say, for example, I'm reporting on El Chapo's son. I can't talk about his drugs. I can't talk about fentanyl. But I could talk about how much time he's going to do, how much time, uh, I don't know, how much time it took for his extradition, like something like that. But it can't be talking about drugs. I just can't talk about drugs. Right, right. So I've already right. tested the waters, bro, on a lot of different things. And I've already got reports. I failed. And then uh, and I've succeeded, so I, I know what works and what doesn't. But even sometimes 
when I get too cocky headed, bro, then then uh, I just end up getting reported. So, well, well you know, El, El Chapo's um, uh, wife was staying right here in Long Beach. In Long Beach, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, is, is she released already, Mio? Yeah, she got released. She got released. Yes. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Say hypothetically, you were a um, single cisgender male. No, sis, you know, but <laughs> a single man, yeah. right, hypothetically. And you met her at a um, restaurant. Oh, yeah. And you knew damn well who she was. <laughs> Could you date a woman like that? Hell no, bro. Not even if I got the approval, bro, from the Sinaloa cartel. I still wouldn't do it. Yeah. Because that's yeah. just too, that's too dangerous of a game to be playing right there. It's like, you know, a lot of people be like, yeah, she's pretty and this and that. I'm like, bro, y'all better watch what you're saying, Watch bro. what you're saying, <laughs> bro. are watching. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the thing about it is... Uh, you know, of course, the cartel is much, much stronger in Mexico because over here, you know, they watch it a little more, of course. But uh, but the, the things are still being handled, bro. You yeah, know, the things are still being handled out here. And uh, yeah, bro. But it's crazy. I, I still got to I still got to watch what I post. Yeah, yeah I still yeah. got to watch what I post. But I still do get on those topics. And the last video that I did report on El Chapo Sun, it did like two point five million views. So so um, yeah, like I said, bro, TikTok's paying me for all that. So it's. No, it's going really good. If you could interview a chopper, would you? Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. If I could interview a chopper's wife, man, that'd be tight. Okay. You it, know? If a chopper goes, you got five questions to ask me, and that's it. What would be one or two or three questions you would ask him? Uh, like if he was like the same position that he's incarcerated right, right now? Right now. Like say, come on in. Sit down right there. They handcuffed him. You sit across from him. They put a mic. And he said, te doy cinco preguntas. Five I'll questions. Like, I'll be like, bro, what's a stash house that nobody knows about where all your money's at? He's going to say, calmate, way. <laughs> okay. I'll be like, you know, uh, so that'll be one, you know what I'm saying? I would hope that he would just be like, well, he'd be like, well, I got nothing to lose. You know, I'm going to be right. here for the rest of my life. So, you know, maybe, bro, they actually did find a, a supposed stash house of El Chapo. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there was a video that was surfacing online of a, of a old Chapo stash house. And they were reaching inside the windows like this. And grabbing some pacas, bro, of just green. You know what I'm saying? And they were like giving it to the workers. They were like, here, bro, take some. Ta here, you take one, you take one. Bro, they were pulling them out by right. the loads, bro. By the loads. Wow. So I don't know. I think that there's probably still some money hitting around somewhere. There's a lot of hidden money in Mexico. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, one of my questions would be? That. Por qué? Por qué? <laughs> Oh, simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? <laughs> you know, why? You know, yeah, I, I think, I do think that if he would, somebody would ever to talk to him, I, I do think, I, I would want to know about his childhood. Like, what was it growing up at his home? Mm -hmm. You know, what, was there something? Was there an event? Was there a family member? Was there somebody that, que le puso eso en la cabeza? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put that in his head, too. And, and then that's the, the route. Or maybe one day I was with my tío and I saw him do an exchange. And then from there, I saw that it could be done. It could yeah, be easy. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think his story would be very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised, bro, that he even took that highway because his mom is actually Christian. So no. It, yeah, so El Chapo's mom is actually Christian, bro. And so what I'm hoping is that, you know, he accepts Jesus while he's in jail, bro, because I'm pretty sure I have to give you a Bible. Well, that's the only way he can get out, bro, right? what else is he going to do? Think about his past? Nah, bro, he's Bible right here, bro. The Bible is timeless. You know, he, if he reads that, bro, he can still be saved, bro. I mean... You know, I'm not God. Um, right. He can, he can still be saved, bro. So I hope that he is, bro. And I know that his mom is Christian. So that's also like what, what really uh, mind, mind boggles me. Because I'm just like, bro, how does it, how is his mom Christian? His mom Christian. And, and uh, but he went down that path. You know, I know that he started off very, very poor. But like, how did he go down that path, bro? I, I, know, I know a rapper that's very famous. Okay, very famous. Yeah. Got money. Okay, uh -huh. beautiful home. It's been successful. And he's a dirty ass dog, but his wife's an ordained minister. Damn, I don't know who that is, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> so hey, you know what? Can you guys find out how old the Chapo is? Yeah, go ahead and look that up. I want to know how old he guess, is, bro. And then and then let's guess about how many more years he's got. So maybe by that time he'll probably do a he'll hold a revival in sixty six. Damn. So how many more years you give him? What about seventy three, seventy five? Uh, to live? Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Well, I mean, he, he is a little overweight, so maybe, uh, maybe the maybe it'll take a toll on his body, bro. Or maybe he'll lose weight. Maybe he's hitting his burpees. Maybe he's hitting his burpees, eating you know his spreads, but spreads aren't his, healthy. He's hitting his program time, bro. So, so 
I don't and he know. runs through tunnels, so that's a little a little cardio. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, no, nah. he got some cardio, bro. So I think uh, if he's fortunate enough, you know, the 70, 73, bro. Seventy three. So he's seventy three. So, so so he's wow. I don't know though, bro. It's a it's a long it's a long time, bro. It's, even then, it's still a long time. But I don't know. Don't you think that his his brain would like kind of die slowly, bro? Because you're in there, you're just looking at these brick walls. I heard that all he has like, is like a little square like this that he could just see like this. That's his vitamin D right there, huh? That's his vitamin D right there. That's sad, yeah. Well, do, do you think do they let him go out at all, like for sun? Uh, you know, I'm I'm not. Yeah, I don't think he gets time out, bro. So that's what I'm saying is all I, all I have to give him is that little window. He can't even talk to the security guards. No, to the COs. He can't talk to the COs. So he can't be like, psh, psh, hey, wait, hey. One phone call a month, bro. Damn. Yeah. He's in Colorado. In Colorado, Supermax. Yeah, Canyon City. Yep. Wow. Oh yeah, and it, and uh, apparently, like a month and a half ago, they were uh, they were fearing that he was already escaping or uh, planning his planning his escape. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. speaking of Colorado, I heard that there's reptilians living over there. Is that true? Oh, in the DIA. Yeah, man. I mean, if you go, if you if you ever go to DIA, I mean, you'll see like these banners, and it'll be like, "We're constructing something very secret," and then it'll have like a reptilian like on the on the on the banner, bro. It's kind of weird, but. No nah, man, I don't know. I mean, I know that there was that little video that surfaced of that lady on the airplane. Yeah, what was oh, up with that, like, bro? Yeah, she was like, "What she say?" She's like, "She's that like, damn mother effer is not real." Yeah, that girl, yeah, yeah. You know who she was talking about? Uh, a reptilian, bro. That was me on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, but no, nah, like, but later on she came out and did like a video, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, you know, that was me and blah, blah, blah. And, but the, she never really fully came out and said what was it that she saw, huh? You know what's so funny? Yeah, is she, she never fessed up. She never yeah. said, she actually said that her lawyers weren't allowing her to speak on it. That's crap. She was yeah. probably on a, on, a, on a good, on a sick one. On a sick one, yeah. So I don't know. They were saying that she was arguing with somebody and, uh, and the guy just wouldn't like give up his seat or something like that. Oh, okay. I don't know what it was, bro, but. But I, those memes that came out of that video were just way too funny, bro. Yeah, yeah. What about Sasquatch? He just did it recently, uh, an, an appearance. That was actually in Colorado, too. He was in Colorado, yeah, too. He was just Colorado. chilling over there. That fool looked like Chaka from Land of the Lost. He didn't look like Bigfoot. <laughs> like, I mean, like, is that all we have is a weak-ass Bigfoot walking around? Like, some lady said, oh, he was about six foot tall. I'm like, we're six foot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd go heads up with Bigfoot if I saw yeah. him. You know, so... I, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I want to believe in Bigfoot, but so far, they're not doing a good job of convincing yeah. me. Nah, you know what's funny is, uh, I think they just came out and said that, uh, that, the squad, that the Bigfoot that came out on that video was probably just the owner. Because apparently, like, the owner likes to, like, joke around with the people and likes to just go walk around and go, So like, he dressed up. That's what they're speculating. But nobody knows. Nobody's confirming if it's actually true. So, I mean, I don't know, bro. Okay. Could be, could, you know, okay. might do, be false. Do you believe UFOs? Uh, do I believe in UFOs? I mean, God is, a, God is pretty much a, an extraterrestrial uh, being, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I do, I do believe. Marcianos. In, uh, Marcianos, like the UFO, UFO. Yeah, like, take me to your leader type of guys. Uh, well, bro, I mean, they, they, they just recently uncovered the guys over there. In uh, well, in 2017, they they re, uh, they they took out those guys from a cave in Peru, and they brought them over to Mexico, and then they just unveiled them pretty recent ago. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little boxes. Yeah, the little boxes. And are, are we really afraid of those? That's what I'm saying. I was like, bro, is, is this really all that we got, bro? Like, like this, this is what we're afraid of this entire time. And you know what's so crazy? He's like, bro, they both have arms and they they have legs and a head. It's like, fool, I thought we were gonna have some some other type of like six. Footed guy or something like yeah, that. Like Two a, heads or a something. A squid with legs or something, you know? Man, I mean, man, like uh, what, 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 what was the name of that movie, you know, with uh, Will Smith? Remember? Um, uh, and Randy Quaid or... Remember? No, not Men in, not Black. Men in Black. The guy where he socks the that damn uh, alien in the head. Damn, I don't even know. And Independence, Independence Day. Day. Independence Day. That was good. See, I'm expecting a visitation like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, nah, bro. And uh, That was a good movie. Man, that's a, that's what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like an alien invasion. But you got some paper mache monitos like this, and I'm like, they sell this in TJ. Stop. Like it looks kind of like me, like me, one of me, my little primos, bro. Honestly, 
And, and, and they were supposedly small like this. Yeah. Um, bro, we're not gonna be. Nobody's gonna be afraid of that crap. It look like little mocoso, bro. Just add the it, little it, silver teeth in there. Right, know? silver tooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I used to have silver teeth, bro, back in the day. For real? Silver teeth energy, bro. Yeah. All right, all right. I believe you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's touch a little bit on this, and then we'll take some calls. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have a lot of people differences of opinions about the bombings from uh, the Palestinians to Israel. Yeah, yeah. Have you covered any of that? Uh, you know, I haven't, bro. I haven't. I'm not okay. going to lie. I, I, have, I have covered the videos that surface, you know what I'm saying? But right. I haven't really taken sides. Okay. And I'm not, I don't, I'm, honestly, bro, I don't really want to take sides because, uh, you know, what's the need, bro? What's the need to, like, do I have to take a side? You know what I'm saying? There's innocent people dying on the streets, bro. Right. And so how am I going to favor one side of innocent people over the other side of innocent people? Right. It's like, bro, they're both innocent. What did they do? Right. The little kids, bro. And I agree with you 100%. The, the, the innocent people, there's innocent people. There's people on both sides, bro, sh you know, uh, shooting at each other. Let's just, for the mm -hmm. sake of the conversation, they're shooting at each other. And the innocent ones are being killed by the fallout. By the fallout, yeah. Okay. You know, they, they're being killed and they have nothing to do with it. Okay. Now, but I, I do want to say this. I want to make a point because I, I said something and some people said they thought I was crazy for even bringing it up. But that's just me. I don't give a damn. I go against the grain. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to voice my opinion. Um, when um, it's those Russia or... Um, Ukraine? Ukraine. When they were getting bombed by Russia, okay? Everybody was on here, pray for Ukraine, pray for Ukraine, yeah, pray for Ukraine, yeah, pray for yeah, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Israel gets bombed. <laughs> pray for Palestine, free Palestine, yeah. Palestine this, Palestine this, Palestine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like... I was just trying to make sense of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, it's funny because when Russia was bombing Ukraine, I didn't see anybody saying pray for Russia. Yeah, no, that is. It didn't make. It wouldn't have made sense. No, it didn't make no sense. So I was just trying to make sense of it. So I made a post when Ukraine was getting bombed. Everybody saying pray for Ukraine. I haven't seen anybody pray for Israel. And then people started commenting because we're too busy praying for Palestine, mm -hmm. free Palestine, free Palestine. Yeah. Uh, 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 the Jewish people there are living in stolen land. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know Israel, and I studied the history of Israel. So a post on Instagram is not going to convince me, bro. Okay? Yeah, Look at, biblically speaking, and we're talking about biblical history, and we could even talk archaeology. That's been their land since day one and much, much more. Mm -hmm. Okay? You go back to 70 AD, you know, when the Jewish people were dispersed to the four corners of the earth. From Israel. Mm -hmm. And it was prophesied in Ezekiel 38 that God will bring them back in the last days. Not only did he restore back their land, but he gave them back their language, their Hebrew language. Yeah. Almost for 2,000 years, that land was desolate. So now they, they come back, they flourish, they're blooming. Now they want the land back. Some people say, no, that's stolen land. How could you, are you going to say that I was stolen land when they still have the temple ruins there on their property? Uh -huh. And you built a mosque on their temple ruins property. Right, right. Make so no it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So that's why when people say, well, as they stole their land, I'm sorry, bro, their temple is still right there. It's just in ruins. Like mm -hmm. since 70 AD. It was originally their land. Then. Yes. I mean. Yeah. And honestly, I hadn't really thought about it the way that you just said it, bro. But that makes perfect sense right there. The, the first person who built a temple was um, King Solomon. Solomon. Yep. Okay. Uh, King David's son. Then it was destroyed, and then they were taken into captivity into Babylon, which is modern-day Iraq. After 70 years later, the, the temple gets restored. And you know who renovates it? Herod. That, that was during the time of Christ, which was the first century. Then, about 37 years later, it gets destroyed again. Okay? And the temple ruins are still there. So how can they say that stolen land? That's what I, I'm, I'm not trying to argue with anyone or take sides, but what's facts is facts. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So... That's true. Anyway, you guys can unsubscribe if you guys don't like me. But uh, I, hey, no, nah, I love it. But if you guys are watching this and you guys are gonna unfollow him just based out of his opinion, that's just a bad look, bro. Because there's no way, bro. Like people, people have disagreements everywhere. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And so uh, you're not perfect, bro. I'm not perfect. No, far and from then, it. And you might have uh, opinions, bro, that people might not like, bro. But man, it's not about canceling people, bro. It's about just accepting people's opinions. Right. You know. And even when people, even when people um, hear what I have to say. Then their next thing is, those aren't the real Israelites. Okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. Tony doesn't know anything. I can provide facts. You can provide nothing. Mm -hmm. And you want to argue with me. So. <laughs>
Anyways, um, let's go ahead and let's. Uh, uh, anything else I didn't ask you, bro? Anything you want to cover? Oh uh, no, man. Anything you want to say? No. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get some pissed off people in here so they can call in and. Um, they gonna attack you, bro, for them comments you just said. I don't give a damn. I like it. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I stand where I stand. So. You, you you know what's funny though, when people think of Jewish people, I, I'm sorry to say, a lot of the people here are ignorant. Here's what they here's what they think. They think of George Soros, Jerry Heller, and maybe some Hollywood executive that ripped them off. Mm -hmm. That's who they think Israel is. Like, no, my friend. You know, and especially if you've never gone over there, please don't speak. No. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what but I wanted you, to go, but... you asked and I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, does this count? I almost went over there seven times. You said what? I said, does this count? I almost went over there seven times. Oh, every man. time I went on it, every time I was supposed to go with yeah. my buddies, yeah, pl plans fell through. Oh man, I still okay. want to. I still want to take my dad there, bro. But now it's getting bombed, so it's okay. We can still go. Yeah, here we go, right here. <laughs> Caller, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Jaime, Jaime Martinez. I'm calling from Chico, California. What's up, Jaime Martinez? Uh, Northern California. Um, I'm just calling uh, to ask about. The documentary and if it's really gonna come out because uh the rasa has been waiting for many many years many many years how many years do you recall you should know you're well, the one well, that started the documentary right yeah, yeah i understand that but i'm asking you a question you want me to answer your question i'm asking you do you know how many years and my second question is to you did you donate well that's fucking pathetic i mean I'm asking you a That's question, bro. Pathetic, bro. Uh, how no, come you bro, can't answer the question, bro? How come no, you cannot no, answer that, the dog. question? Fuck that. Okay. Fuck that shit. See, look, he can't even fuck answer that. the question. Hold on. Let me go ahead and screenshot no, his number bullshit, real fast. Homie, you're bullshit, homie. Uh, you're bullshit. You're bullshit, homie. You're bullshit. Okay, let's go. Let me go ahead and give you his number. Uh, let me see. He couldn't even answer two simple questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, the, the, the moment that somebody starts cussing, bro, it's like, man, you already let your, uh, your anger he get He can't you, bro. even answer the question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Shit froze. Okay. Yeah, that, that man was pretty mad. Uh, yeah, he sounded wow. pretty mad. That's on. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. This is uh, Brad Pipple. Brad, how are you doing? From the good, good. Hey, um, hey, Tony, can you can you give that previous caller his ninety nine cents back on his EBT card? Come on, <laughs> you, know, you know he's uh. Hey, Brad. Uh, trying to get the. I, I asked him fair yeah. questions, right? Yeah, no, yeah, it's fair. Okay, fair. That's cool. But, um, Go ahead, bro. You got a question? Hey, hey but ninety nine, but but ninety nine cents is ninety nine cents, you know? Right, right. But, uh, Okay. But um, I know you touched on uh oh this is bad people representing Team Palestine in the house Dope. and uh, pray for Russia and also um <laughs> mm -hmm. and and yeah and yeah. people can come and hate on my channel but uh hey on on I know you quickly glanced over Bigfoot but um hey uh, I was wondering if, if he if he believes in Bigfoot and if he believes if he believes it's a monster or an interdimensional being and and that's a serious question. Well, if if he's true, bro, if he's true, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I think that they were saying that he was the owner, bro, of the company, of that railway company, because they were actually on a train, you know what I'm saying? So they were actually just a, they have a, so there's a train system, bro, in Durango, Colorado, where you actually, um, right. where they load about like a hundred different people, bro, and they all just go for a, for a train ride through the mountains. And so that same owner, right. they said that he already has a history of just putting on a costume and just roaming through the forest and then tricking people into believing that he's Bigfoot. But I guess in a hypothetical right. um, way, if I truly did believe that he was real, then I would say that, uh, yeah. I would say he's one of the, he's just another uh, gorilla, bro, that just didn't evolve, I guess, like how they say, bro. Could one be of the, the missing link. Yeah, one of the, right. one of the stupid, uh, one of the stupid uh, gorillas or slash monkeys, bro, that just didn't evolve into human beings. But uh, yeah, right. bro. That's my pick. In my opinion, he's just a, he's a cryptid and they're, they're different medicines, but they're another, another part of the human race. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that's it. That, that, that's, that's my only question. All right. Thank you for taking my call. All right, my All right. bro. Yeah. Gracias. Going, bro. All right. Later. 
All right, let's keep it pushing now. Who's in the call next? <laughs> All right, let's see. How the comments looking? Damn, them boys are putting a lot of laughing emojis up. <laughs> All right, callers, let's go. The phone lines are open. Who's in the call next? <laughs> okay, here we go. Caller, your name or where are you calling from? What up, Tony? What up, 44 Vato? It's the Snowman from the Harbor area. How you guys doing today? What's up, Snowman? It's What's been up, a minute. Bro? What's up? Yeah, it's been a minute. I'm glad I'm glad I caught y'all because, uh, you know, I just wanted to bring up this topic uh, for 44 Vato. Uh, like, why is it, like, in the black community, Latin community, you know, somebody's on the come up. We want to know what middle school they went to. You know, did they really go to the hood liquor store? But if it was a white guy like Mr. Beast, nobody's trying to, you know, validate where he grew up, how he grew up. That's a good question. Well, uh, it, it, that is pretty confusing, bro, because it is weird that it's only the minorities that get asked that, bro. Like, I don't know how much times I got asked that today. Where are you from? Oh, uh, what, what city? Like, it's like, damn, bro. It's like, if I was white, nobody would really ask me those questions. But yeah. I guess it's just because they, they look at your skin color and they just automatically assume that you have a hood. You know, a Very white true. person, a white person, bro, is like, oh, this person is just Malibu. From, Malibu or this guy's from I don't know bro Ohio or something like that yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying but it's because they, I think they just look at our skin color bro and I just feel like a lot of people don't have uh, things to talk about bro whenever they just ask you that it's like a uh, not in a professional setting bro nobody would ask you that bro it's usually just you just being in, in the hood you know what do you yeah. think Tony no I believe it's true bro I yeah. believe it's true yeah yeah no I, I that's a, that's a hot topic right now you know no yeah. it, it is bro because it's true all right you know what? Let me just give an example. Like I said one time, that if you look at a black man or, or somebody from the Chicano culture, in the trash cans, we'll say he's trash digging. But if you saw a white man, he's uh, recycling. <laughs> he's recycling, yeah. <laughs> so go for it, snowman. Yeah, yeah. La last question for Forty Four Vato. Uh, are you a fan of TDE, the record label TDE? Uh, Top Dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. You know, all, all those guys, uh, Schoolboy Q, all, the, all those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, though. I think uh, I think Kendra used to go a little harder back in the day, man, 2012, 2011, bro, whenever he dropped uh, Good Kid, Mad City, bro. But honestly, right now, bro, it's not really something that I could really vibe, vibe out to. It's because, like, he got, like, a little too, uh, I don't know, bro. It's uh, it's definitely, like, not for me no more. You know, I, I know that a lot of fools still listen to his music and stuff like that. But when he was talking about stuff like being in the hood and all that sort of stuff, like, that was tight, bro. That was tight. But right now, it's more like pop. It's almost like pop almost, bro. Because he went viral. Uh, yeah, the, reason yeah. why I ask, <laughs> the reason why I ask is because this is for Tony. They're saying like the um, Death Row stuff didn't age well. You know, like if, if the kids nowadays listen to it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none, the kids nowadays ain't going to want their homies to have none. You know, they're going to want it for themselves. So it didn't really age too well. So they were comparing TDE uh, to who's better, TDE or Death Row Records. I'm going to say Death Row still, bro, because that's my generation. Sad to say that today it didn't age well because today's kids want other kids. <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you. A lot of these guys aren't into girls anymore, bro. <laughs> so maybe they'll make one. If it ain't fun if the homie can't have the homie. <laughs> you know, that's mm. me speaking. That's me speaking because that's what I see with today's music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. so. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, all, all right. Well, I, I, this is the duo that I wasn't expecting uh, to see. I hope 44 Vato gets on CNN. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> his political views might be Fox. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I'm here for it. And, you know, you guys, uh, you know, let's get these callers in and you guys have a great night. Thank you, my bro. Appreciate you, bro. Okay, let's keep it pushing. Let's keep that pushing. That's just a good question, too, by the way. No, it's true. It's true. But yeah. you know, you know what, bro? I just do. I do stand on what I said. You know that these dudes today are liking dudes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. And I think that they're getting really paid for it too. Yeah. Look at Lil Nas X, bro. I really don't think that, that dude's gay, bro. Maybe not. Maybe he's just playing the role. Yeah, I think he's just playing the role. He got call, a bag for it. Call her your name, but where are you calling from? <clears throat> hey, this is Daniel from Santa Maria. Daniel from Santa Maria. You know, I was just there over the weekend. Oh, shit. Damn. 
Uh, I would have got your autograph if, if I would have ran into you. Well, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post it up next time and maybe go have a beer or something. Hell yeah, shit, man. I, I need to make, uh, make an Instagram account, unfortunately. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's do that, bro. You got a question, my bro? Yeah. Hell yeah. <clears throat> no, I just uh, I wanted to say, uh, like, all these people, they're you know, taking shots at you about the documentary, you know, uh -huh. and <clears throat> they're just, I think they're full, I think they're foolish, you know, and, you know, there's by these, like, other podcasts that take shots at you here and there. And, you know, the only reason I know a lot of those guys is from watching Rarity and Radio. I just wanted to point that out, you know. Oh, thank you, man. I, I wouldn't have known the hater world or I wouldn't have known who American Colo is and all these other people, you know, or even Bozo, you know. Right. I don't know. It's weird shit going on nowadays, man. Yeah, well, you know, it's because whenever they don't have yeah. content, they uh, just like to kick up dust and uh, – you know, start little controversial yeah. topics, whatever. I'm not like right. that. I can Get care less. Little numbers up. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, just keep pushing, man. We're we're standing behind you, man. Thank you, my brother. I yeah. truly appreciate. I'll try that. to open. I'll try to open up an Instagram account. Man. No, no, definitely, <laughs> definitely, because I'll I'll be up there next month again. Yeah. yeah. I'm usually up there like for two days. Oh hell yeah, dude. Shit. Hell yeah, oh, bro. Shit. That's that's hella tight, man. Let's do that. Oh yeah, man. You guys have a good night, man. You too, oh, my bro. Too, bro. Okay. All righty, let's keep it pushing. Who's going to call next? Whoever, whoever calls next gets a life blow-up doll, 44 Vato. <laughs> call her your name or where are you calling from? Man, it's chasing that Grim. Man, shout out fucking Rhodium Radio. Uh -oh. Straight the fuck up, man. I'm a West Texas native. Hey, but look, I got a question. 44 Vato, man, this is the first time I heard of you. Okay, like, for okay. real, like, Tony Vision, now, hey, I'm about to look you up, and you look, like, cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. look legit, you look, like, devil, you look demon, you look angel, you look so much <laughs> of many things that I love. You got to understand that angel is what makes, you know what I'm saying, a demon. A demon makes an angel. Like, look, we've been through a hardship, but I got to ask you something real quick, baby. Yeah, what's up? Man, what's like, what's your, what's your thought and what's your process in prayer when you sleep, when you wake up? Like, what's your, what's your belief? Uh, so pretty much, bro, I, I mean, I pray pretty much throughout the entire day, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I hop beside the ride, bro, yeah, right before who, it. But like, but, but, yeah. but like, for who? With the I'm what? Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. With the what, bro? But like, who do you pray to, like? It's oh like, no no no! I, I believe I believe in Jesus, bro. I believe in Jesus because uh, he he said it himself. Like, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, okay. so uh, I believe in Jesus. And uh, if you if you notice, bro, Christianity is the most mocked religion. You know what I'm saying? And they don't they don't really mock other religions, bro. They kind of just poke fun at them occasionally, bro. But uh, when you look at when you look and see just with that, bro, um, that's when you start to realize, bro, that that Jesus is the way, bro. And I mean, we live in 2023 right now, bro. So if you go uh, back 2023 years, bro, that's whenever um, Jesus uh, Jesus died, bro. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, bro. That's the one. That's the one that I pray to. That's that's the one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my belief and my prayer is um, the same, but it's a little bit more different. Word. But. I just had to ask you that because I wanted to know, like, um, you know what I'm saying? Because a badass or, like, a soft, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter if you soft, don't matter where you come from. Like, we all have one thing in common. We are born and we meet death at the same time. But religion is very important, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's religion, bro. It's, it's religion, but uh, I think that a lot of people get too caught up in religion, bro. I think that uh, fools just he he uh, he. I guess it froze. Yeah, he ain't good. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Let me see. He's still there? No, he's not. Pine okay. Hood. Well, I, I guess what you're saying is that you're not in a religion. You're in faith. You're in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. that's not about. Not okay. About here we religion. go. Call her your name, or where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, you guys? This is another shameless plug. 
Miguelito Tattoos on Instagram. What's up, Miguelito? How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, good, Tony. You got a question? Yes, I have I have just one question for 44 Vato. <laughs> what's up, what's up? Hey, what's up, Tim Hernandez? Nice to meet you, man. Oh, what's going on, bro? What's going on? I have one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear it, bro. I have Let's hear it. question for you, man. All right, all right. I've been waiting for a while to ask you this, so. Uh, what's going on? Good. Are you down right now to bust a freestyle, freestyle for Rhodium Radio with the Freaky Tales beat? With the Freaky Tales beat? Go ahead, play the Freaky Tales beat. See if you can bust a freestyle. Drop the beat. Okay, he's gonna find it for you right now. Go. Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> Let me see my phone real quick. I don't know about no freestyles, but I got some ring though. Uh, I'll kick it. I'll kick it. Hold on, bro. Okay, stop it right now till he's ready. Okay, let us know when you're ready. Man, bro. But so just a cold 16. Cold 16, huh? Yeah. Yes. Um. Come on, forty-four bottle. You got. But I honestly have never rapped like in person like this before. So. Uh, it's a rolling radio exclusive. <laughs> Let's go, bust it. Um, Turn it up a little bit. Right there. All right. Sixteen. Let's go. Yeah. Mother F your politicians, crooked or not I started riot in the city just to dump at a cop It was eight years of change and Barack ain't do a thing But put a brown skinny kid inside a wicked cage I see some things at the top of the pulley Just hope the man in charge ain't the puppy of putting Cause I know I'm filling out the belly with the blood of my people And hate the rules they put that made us feel equal They stole the land inside the dotted line Come in the right way, stupid cracker, yeah right Tunnels, they build the wall but I got the rebuttal I stun them, my ride is waiting for me, that's my shuttle, I'm subtle And sometimes they think that I'm weak I got two ears to listen to you twice then I speak You can hate me, just don't diss my mom, please <laughs> Damn, boo. All right, that's good enough. That's good. See, bro, it's good. Let's give him a hand clap. Okay, everybody in the live chat, if you guys liked it, put fire. If you guys didn't like it, put tomatoes. Okay. Hey, Antonio, you feel me riding a spa, bro? Like, I didn't have my flow. Like, bro, I was, I was really, it's because, you know, sometimes the lines, you, you're looking at them, you're like, oh, shoot, did I, did I, do I keep going? Right. Or do I stop? Do I pause? You know? And I'm, I'm, bro, I honestly haven't even. Hey, you know what? But you still, you still did it. I probably, I probably wrote that like three years ago, bro. So. All right. Yeah, it's cool. probably not even relevant. Hopefully that, that was good. Though. Yeah. I was off beat, bro. I hate, I hate, I hate the job that I did. To be honest with you, it's all good. I gotta redeem myself some other time. Yes, Miguelito, you good? It was decent. Eight forty four. What was that? Was that a? Was that what you were trying to write, or, or you just threw that in there with the freestyle? Bro, I I never heard that beat before, so like I don't even know. I wrote that. I wrote that thing maybe three, four years ago. So I just I went through my notes, bro, and I just pick one. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. You went the flow, man. All right, man. Well, I'm going to let you go. It was nice to meet you, man. And let's go to the next caller. Good. Duh, good. Thank you, my bro. Okay, we're going to take about two more phone calls, so let's keep it pushing, you guys. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? <laughs> caller, please turn on your TV. <laughs> caller. Yo. Please turn on your TV. Turn it up. Yo, yo. What's good, my bro? Your name, or where are you calling from? Hey, uh, what's up with the documentary, dog? Okay, uh, two questions, bro. Uh, did you donate? It's a simple Why are you getting mad when they ask you? It's a simple question. I'm not getting mad. I'm just asking you a question that you're not answering, so I just hang up. So my question is, did I you did. donate? Okay. So he, So here's my response to you. Put up, uh, do you got the rolling radio at gmail.com? Okay, we're going to put up the email on the I TV. I send it to you. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Okay? I sent it to you last week. Okay, I'm going to look it up because I don't think you sent it. Because not hey, one person Vato, ask him. Not ask one him. person has sent me anything. I'll Vato, tell you what. Ask him, Hold dog. on, bro. Let me talk. Let me talk. You called and asked me a question. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check my email. And if you donate it, what check I'm going right to do. Now. What I'm going to do. Check it I'm right gonna, now online. Right now, what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll send you my number. And you can call me, and I will give you a personal I have update. The number, dog. Okay. Well, this is not my number, bro. Okay. So I'm gonna check the okay, email. But why can't you just check it online? Because I'm not gonna check it right now, bro. I'm not gonna. Ha I'm not gonna have you tell me what to do. So I'm gonna check the email, and then I'll contact you via email. Them, Thank you, bro. 
So a lot of these guys, bro, yeah. they just call in and just, you know, whatever. Put up the email. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm sure that you have. The, I don't okay. know what documentary you're talking about, bro, but I'm, I'm sure. Here that, we go. I'm sure that just probably. Call her your name and where you calling from. Yeah. Yeah, like a motherfucker, man. You know what I mean? It's going down over here. Hey, man, it's your boy from around the way. Shout out to motherfucking Tony A. The baddest motherfucker in the podcasting game. What's up? 44 Rocko, motherfucker? What's, What's the up, deal, bro? bro? What's the deal? Going down. What's Damn! Up? You know what I mean? All right, just had a fucking uh, quick question for the homie motherfucking Tony A, though. And a quick question for motherfucking Fofo. You know yeah. what I mean? Creeping yeah. through the back door, through your window. I'll cut in, though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony Fo, uh, you're dog, dog. You know what I mean? I'm so... Much respect, boo. I'm going to say this shit. Much respect, though, to everything you do, everything you fucking, everything, dog. Appreciate but you, bro. Appreciate with, you. With ever, this, 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 this is for Tony. Would there ever be a, um, you know, a possibility of you having Mr. Criminal on your podcast host? Well, you know what? He was actually asked that question on his podcast. Hmm. And I actually posted it on my page. And he actually said, fuck no. He said he wouldn't. That's what he said. I, I didn't have a problem with that. That's who said that? Yeah, that's what he said. I have it on my page. Somebody asked him on his live chat, would you ever consider coming on Rodeon Radio? And he said, fuck no. So that was his response. Uh, now, two years prior, I had invited him on it. We were texting each other, and he said, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. But it just never happened, bro. I mean, it doesn't matter. He has, he has his own podcast, and, you know, let him keep winning. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, nah, nah, it is what it is. Hey, both you guys are fucking giants in the game. You know what I mean? There's money for everybody. Absolutely. And that's that's kind of damn. I don't know that fool fucking said that. That's kind of that's kind of you know what I mean? That's weak on his part because we're supposed to be kicking this whole fucking unity thing, and I didn't know that fool fucking came at you like that. You know what I mean? It it is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's nothing. I mean, I mean, hold hold it down, Tony. You know what I mean? You're fucking OG dog. So you know what I mean? We already know what's up. Thank you, my brother. Um, it's part forty four. Uh, hey, boo, like, what's up with the Texas politics, dog? What's up um, with the what, bro? What's, what's your, what's, what's your feeling on Little Bing? Little Bing and, like, Lucky Luciano. You ever, you ever want to work with, like, Lucky? With, uh, Look, Lucky Luciano? Yeah. I heard, uh, yeah. He's, he's a, he's a Christian artist now, right? Oh, he is? Like, he's not. I don't think he's doing the, nah, the, I don't know. the regular yeah, rapping yeah, no more. I think, I think he is, though. I think he's Christian now, bro, so. I mean, honestly, if you wanted to hop on the Christian tracks, I'm, I'm with it, bro. You know, I I I, uh, I have got the chance to listen to a few of his uh, of his tracks, bro. So he's doing he's doing a really great job, bro. The show, what's oh oh shit? One more, hold on, I one more. I got one more, Fofo. Yeah yeah yeah. All right, hold on. Texas motherfucking champ. What's what's your opinion on? And we don't gotta get into it, but with what what, what happened with Zero and Trey? We don't got it, you know what I mean? Because you know that affected a lot of shit. What zero happened with Z, You know what I mean? Like you think Trey Trey really jumped zero? Like what, what what happened over there? Damn, bro. Honestly, honestly, don't have too much information on them, bro. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't have an opinion because I don't know what, what what happened. What happened there? They're trying to say Trey the truth, jump zero, man. Oh, Trey the truth. You mean like yeah. Yeah, Trey the truth is zero. You're a CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might have he might have set him up, bro. I don't know. It's kind of, Damn. When did when did that happen again? A minute ago, like yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you I do mean? remember That's, that. You know what I mean? It's, it's Texas history. It's the same thing with Trey Punk, Mike Jones, and the motherfucking eye. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. All right, all right. Shit, hey. Much love to both of y'all. Tony, keep doing your motherfucking thing. Popo, keep doing your motherfucking thing. It's going down. Big sticks and pogo sticks. I'm out of here. Hell yeah. Yes, Thank sir. you, my bro. Okay, let's see. Okay. Alex, do me one bit. We can take these off, bro. Okay. Do me one favor. Okay, just a special announcement. Okay. Uh, you put up the email? Okay, keep, put it up again. Okay, it's up there. You guys see the email up there? RodeonRadioGmail.com. Okay. If you guys gave with the Chicano Rap documentary, I'm going to say this again, because the only people that call are the people that don't give or that never gave. For If you gave and you want to update specifically from me, email me proof that you gave. I don't care if it's $5 or $1. 
Email me proof at rodeoradio gmail.com and I will shoot you a number where you can call me and I will show you proof of the uh, 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 an update of the Chicano Rap documentary. Okay, so I'm I'm telling you guys, don't don't call me, bro, and try to like, oh, I'm gonna embarrass. Bro, I'm just going to hang up on you, bro, because all you guys that do call, your two callers, guarantee you, you guys didn't give. I haven't received not one email, so I need to say that because I'm putting the email out there and I'm challenging you guys. If you guys gave, I don't care if you gave a dollar, okay? Send me proof, and if you want your dollar back, I'll give you a dollar back, okay? So other than that, um, we're good, man. Hey, man, appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me, Tony A, for real. Anything that I didn't ask you, anything that maybe you want to talk about or anything before we head out? Uh, nah, man, I think we covered pretty much everything, bro. Okay. Yeah, I really do appreciate you, like I said, bro, for, for having me on here, bro. It's been a long time coming. And uh, yeah, man, for real. Oh, good. Uh, uh, 2023, uh, we got pretty much two more months. Yeah, yeah. So this year's a wrap. Mm -hmm. 2024, what can people expect, if anything, new from 44 Vato? Well, they're going to expect a million followers on TikTok. Yeah, I'm already at 600K. So uh, I think probably in, in, in maybe February, I was at 400K. So, I mean, I'm going at a really consistent rate. Really? So, yeah. So I'm trying to get to a, I'm trying to, get to a million followers there. And uh, hopefully, bro, bring out some more music. Honestly, like, I'm really, really disappointed <laughs> in what I just did for you guys, bro. But I'm going to redeem myself. And you guys can go check out uh, Life Survive on, on YouTube, bro. I promise I'm not off beat on that song one single time. And, um, yeah. Nah, but nah, the good nah. thing is, really least nice. you're wearing a mask. They don't know who you are. Yeah, they don't know who I am. They don't know who I am. But but in that song, Life Survive, I was actually going in on the track, bro. So, really fire track. They That'll should go work. check it out. That'll work. Shout outs? Uh, shout out to, um, you know, to, to, uh, to everybody in Vatoville, bro. Shout out to uh to the wifey right here, bro. And shout out to uh to all the homies. Shout out okay. to all the tortitas and the hanitas. Hell yeah. Tortitas. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh let me go ahead and get my shout outs. Uh oh, November 17th. As a matter of fact, if you guys all you both of you guys that called, if you guys want to come on November 17th, make sure you guys pay at the door and then you can ask me any question about the Chicano Rap documentary in person. Okay? <laughs> in person. So other than that, uh put up the flyer. For the November 17th, once again, Club Rhodium, all 90s music. It's going to be meet and greet. Me and High C going to be there. DJ Yella already confirmed. He's going to be there. Uh, uh, NWA member DJ Yella is going to be selling his merch. He's going to be selling t-shirts. He's going to be selling his book there. We got other guests that are going to be coming as well. We're just going to be hanging out, dancing, drinking, bumping music, total club vibe atmosphere. You know, so that's, that's all we're going to be doing. It's our first event. Make sure you guys come out. Uh, uh, I think we're going to hit the link. Uh, I'm going to put up the link tomorrow on my story and on my page and in my bio so that you guys can go because we're already halfway sold out. So uh, other than that, did you get the flyer already? No. Okay, we're going to put the flyer at the end. Okay, but um, so make sure you guys get the directions. You guys uh, show up. Uh, I would love to meet you guys. A lot of you guys always tell me, Tony, I would love to meet you. Come through, take a shot with me. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, let me go ahead and thank my boy Alex Advances, Advances Enterprise, my son B Scanless, uh, the Hip Hop Jedi, uh, News of Norbert, Norbert, Marvelous Inc., and uh, our moderator Magic Girl, and everybody on the live chat, everybody who who uh, uh, who's uh, commenting, everybody who's liking, everybody who's disliking, everybody who decided not to be on the live chat, and all of our callers. Much love, much respect, and expect two more freaky tales this week. Two more freaky tales. Okay, so once again, stay tuned. Love you guys. Uh, much love, respect, and uh, other than that, uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you, Forty for what though. All right, man. Appreciate you, bro.
till I'm old woman. Oh shit! 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 shit. shit. Play a wonderful game called Who Is Your Daddy? That's one ugly mother. I'll be back. Yeah.